What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 153 of Value Town. I'm Chan Man B, joined today by Gara and Raven. What's up, guys? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, too. Gara, how are you doing, man? Tired, actually. I went to bed oh, at, like, no. I believe 10 a.m. this morning, just to, you know, not be awake for, like, 48 hours yeah. for this show. And to continue to grind oh, till this is like 9 a.m. tomorrow. This is so <laughs> My brutal. sleep schedule is completely ruined. <laughs> oh, man, man. I don't but, have a sleep schedule. I just sleep like at uh, random times for random hours, I feel like. You sound like every single Hearthstone pro player the <laughs> last three days, which is like nonstop grinding, just staying awake 24 plus hours. <laughs> it's definitely crazy. Um, but I want to start off the show by introducing you, Gar, as an, as a, an official host now. So Gar is going to be joining the, the Value Town uh, show as as an official host. So he's going to try to be on here as as um, much as he can. You know, given he's going to, he's a pro player, so he's going to be traveling around and stuff. But uh, welcome to the family, dude. It's going to be amazing. I think I know a lot of people like loved you being on the show the last few weeks. So it just made sense to me, given that I had so much fun doing the show with you too. I love talking about Hearthstone. <laughs> All right. Perfect then. Awesome. Uh, this week, though, man, we've got good stuff to talk about. This is one of those weeks where, man, we've got ample amounts of topics. Don't even have to work to like, try to figure out you know, what segments and things to talk about this week because there's some great ones. So we're going to be talking about ladder changes, card nerfs, sweepstakes, which you know came out today. Man, it's crazy new things happening all the time and then of course we're going to be doing a q a at the end a deck of the week of course um and those of you missed deck of the week actually deck of the week uh, the the little mini show we do is available on um the patreon page if you want to check that out patreon.com slash value town or on soundcloud too soundcloud.com slash champion if you want to check that out but um i want to start off with just kind of what we're doing you know gara i know you're freaking laddering crazy like how's that going like what's your rank right now in all the servers um asia finished um i was pushing for top 20 so i got a couple times to around 30 and that was not good enough for me i really wanted to get top 25 and i dropped to top 200 and there was only like five or six hours to go and that's not enough right now from 200 to 20 so i had to stop so right i went to bed but before that i was playing for like i think 24 hours i was streaming for 14 hours climbing and then I stopped streaming and I just continued climbing. Wait, like... wait, wait. So if you're at 200, <laughs> man, in five, six hours, how high can you get? You can, ah, no chance. No I chance. Mean, top 100. Now you get, you get like yeah. 20 ranks per win and your win rate is miserable. Like from all the top players, they all have around, if like 57% win rate is insane right now on High Legend. 57. Mm -hmm. It's wow. insane. Okay. And, but 57, you need to play so many games because... Uh, the average game time is so long right now because the top ladder decks are like Q-Block, Razakus Priest, all the slower decks. So the average game time is at least around 12 minutes per game. So it, it's just such a slow grind. Yeah, it's, it's a and numbers you, game, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't, not playing an aggro deck, like no way, no way. Right now I'm top 50 on NA and I don't know if I'm happy with top 50 now. Better to get at least top 50 than... Uh, not yeah. having like a relatively high finish at all. I really wanted to get top twenty-five. I don't know. Okay. I'm because I'm trying to so top ten k. <laughs> top ten k. <laughs> well, you do better than me because I didn't even try to get a ledge. I'm like ranked three or four right now. But um, yeah. So in, in terms of like the meta, you know, for this, because this is like the first time I would say, you know, since the, the World Championships, and it, we've got some announcements coming up that will kick in af actually after next month. But, um, you know, I felt like with the new point system, you know, this is the first time we're actually seeing what the meta will kind of look like, you know, in terms of, of uh, how people are going to be trying to acquire points on the ladder. So with Asia, given that's already done, like looking back on it, what would you do differently? Like, uh, would you have tried to, to climb higher earlier or anything? Uh, I, I did actually, in my opinion, the most optimal preparation. Mm -hmm. I spent the five months... Was it five months where there was off season? I think it was around five months. And I tested a lot of different things. I tested, um, play, uh, first I tested if it's, if it's worth to play free servers. Like Tyler is known to be like the most hardcore grinder and not even he plays free servers right now. 
just because it's so slow to grind right. and the win rates overall are like so low like 58 or 56 percent win rate is just so bad if you think about it for the best players nobody has like above that uh long term across the season so i tested that um the, the best month i had was i think november i got rank one legend after 10 days and then i sa started a second server and i tested like how difficult is it to maintain rank one legend and and climb a second server to rank one legend right and then i got there to top 10 legend after three days and i was like okay this is the most optimal grind and then i started the third server and everything crumbled this, then then you lose rank one on the first server you drop on the second server you're like struggling to hit legend on the third server oh, yeah. it's, it's it's no chance so above two servers like no way so i did like really like okay two servers is the optimum and then which two servers are the best the best combination is asia and na because there's 18 hours in between resets or something like that like uh, for me today at 5 p.m wow. asia resetted God. and 9 a.m tomorrow is na so i can even mm -hmm. sleep in between and play for another like 12 hours or something and before that i did asia and eu but there was always like only six hours in like in between resets and i, I was already usually gl grinding for 20 hours on asia so i'm so tired that i could never continue on eu afterwards so that's like the, this is what adieu is also doing like the right. na asia combination and that's like the main reason for it it's just the most optimal so combo for folks and, that, yeah well, well for folks that don't understand why you're doing multiple servers like why are you trying to like get points on every single server yeah because the highest server counts so it doesn't matter on which server you're uh, finishing except china because they have their own point system there for some reason and <laughs> we can't weird. even play on chinese <laughs> servers because you need to register with like a chinese license or like a personal information id whatever got it uh so you couldn't even play there uh, also as well so china can be really weird because they have like 40 50 000 legend players a month that is so yeah. it, it, it you know if you go in at a certain time you've got a very long climb ahead of you basically even yeah. longer than normal so people are just trying to maximize the chances like you don't want to risk it uh, not finishing on one server so you're climbing two servers this right. is what like most pros are doing and a lot have like groups and play together uh, i'm i'm personally against that i i feel like i don't know there's like no official rule against it that forbids it but like most of the top point earners, like the the two highest point earners of last year, they didn't play alone pretty much. Like Mazi and Sintolo, they had their groups, like top groups, oh. and then climbed together yeah. and finished. And and I don't know if that's like fair or not. Obviously, they're amazing players, but could I have done it alone? That's like another yeah. question. I mean, we, we've talked about this a little bit on the show. I actually, Raven, I think you might have even been on the episodes that we talked a little bit about like group playing. I mean, I don't even know if there's anything we can do about that, right? I think I think what we concluded when we discussed it, it was just that, you know, that's just, you know, I guess that's kind of just how it goes, right? And yeah, and, it, um, it's the difference, but like one, it, you can't police it mm -hmm. in any way. You just you just can't. And two, I can't imagine a world where Blizzard wants to uh, dissuade people from playing Hearthstone with their friends. Uh, obviously, yep. this is at the extreme level of that. But still, to say, oh, no, no, you're not allowed to grind. Like, where do you, you're not allowed to grind from rank 10 to rank 9 non legend with friends. It's like, really? You know, like, <laughs> there's no line. You can't draw a line in the sand anywhere. Yeah. So, although, yes, you know, it might not feel great if you try and do it alone and there's a team behind it uh, for someone else. Um, yeah, I mean, yep. the best thing you can do <laughs> that's, that's is do it. <laughs> do it too. Like, you know. Yeah, you should find people to play with yeah. and, and go for it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like, um, you know, top 200, you like, get something, right? You get at least some points for that. Um, so, NA and uh, EU, how, how's it looking right now? Like, it, you know, you mentioned NA. Like, EU wise, are you going to be getting, like, which, which uh, uh, region do you think will be your region that you get points for? Uh, NA for sure. Okay. I hope. Um, this, yeah, I actually had, I had to rebuy all cards on NA as well. So I bought all cards on four servers technically, because it, I actually was the first player that played on two servers. It was the first season. Uh, I got rank one legend on EU and then I made a new, and back then you couldn't play on the same account. You needed to make a yeah, new account. Right. And so I had different battle tags. And now if I finish on a different battle tag, I will get points on a different battle yeah, tag. Yeah, yeah, you have to do And so my NA account was 
for three or four years on a different battle tank. But I had all cards there. Like, it's expensive. Like, oh buying all God, cards on free service, it's, it's very expensive. Oh and then to God. rebuy all cards again. But now, now I finally did it because I wanted to go to DreamHack Denver just so I can also play NA Open Cups. It's the same problem. If I play, you need to play on your NA account, yeah. and it would be NA Battle uh, yeah. Tech. You re register with NA Battle Tech. So I had to buy all cards and Finally, now I can play all three regions. Feels good, man. So, so Gara, how expensive is Hearthstone? It's, <laughs> can, again, can you... it's funny how people complain about one server. I buy all cards on three servers <laughs> yeah. every month. I think the people complain about one server aren't professional Holy. players getting paid to play the game. Though. So <laughs> yeah, there's maybe a slight yeah. difference there in, uh, in, right, in experience. Right. <laughs> I wonder how many do it like I do, like on three servers. This must be very, very few. Yeah, like I, I think it, it is. In, in, in fact, like I think once the events start up too, it's going to be really hard. Um, but you know what? There's going to be some ladder changes that are coming up, and I figure why don't we just kind of segue into that. Um, so Blizzard announced that uh, maybe actually probably it was like a day or two after the last episode that they are going to be changing some things about the ladder. Yay! Oh my God, it's been like ages since we actually had something changed on a ladder. So in fact, like when is the last time o outside of the the um, the floors? I mean, how that, that was yeah, it, wasn't that it? That was it, right? Like, we haven't yeah, had one since the yeah. very beginning, right? When we used well, the, well, stupid, the star it, no, systems, it, it, and it stuff? was yeah, three stars to change to legend, yeah, and then the flaws came in, yeah, and then, <laughs> oh my that's God. it, that's it. So, we've literally only had like two changes in, in the ladder. So, this oh, I, I suppose they kind of did the one that made you face closer ranks. Uh, they, they, well, like, that was the original the... one, right? The original one was when we went from like this five star system. Like literally, it was, it was you just had five ranks basically to a yeah. a you know this twenty five rank plus legend you know system. So um, actually, no, I think we didn't have a legend, and then and then we had a legend. And yeah, we had so, legends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we had like, we gained like it. two or three iterations of the ladder. So well, this it is was like a, the fourth. Wasn't one. it three star masters or five star <laughs> yeah, three, masters? That's, that's where that comes that's, from. It was masters. Yep, that was uh, the early on in beta. That was crazy. Um, I think when everybody was three star masters yeah. basically. <laughs> Um, so anyways, with Did these changes... Out, which month that was? What was that? I, it was 2013, right? The beta. Yeah, it was... Uh, I mean, it, I think it came month. out in September or, or late August. It was September wow. or October, I think. Yeah, yeah. So that for, those first three months, I think, was when we had the you know just basically no ranks yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways so new changes are coming so the the, the differences will be um let's see uh let's see carbacks will now be earned after five wins for a month which is you know, no big deal all ranks now will have five stars so that's a really big difference in terms of the lower ranks because the lower ranks you know you have the cs3 and then it goes up to four and then it goes up to five once you get up to to ten rank ten so um that's going to extend the bottom of Lisa of the ladder, I think, by you know a good a good amount. Um, and then, within... uh, right now, it's from rank twenty five till twenty only, right? That have three stars. Yeah, and then, like and then from twenty to 19. ten has four, and then 20 yeah, twenty to 10, ten has four. Yeah, and then ten to uh, yeah, yeah five. Yeah, yeah. So the, everything will mm -hmm. now have five. So that's the, you know that's like a, probably a thirty percent, you know, maybe somewhere in there, right? So somewhere between uh, thirty and. Uh, yeah, thirty percent range. That that's going to increase uh, at least the number of you know ranks, and that's good, you know, because it kind of spreads out the players, and then matchmaking will probably feel better. You know, it's not like MMR changes at all. MMR is still the same, but your star system or where you're ranked will match a little bit closer to where you should be playing against other people. Um, and then another thing is that on the resets after each season, uh, instead of kind of going all the way back down to fifteen, <laughs> which everybody that's legend is. Um, you'll actually go down exactly four ranks from where you end. So if you... Uh, for, from from your highest finish. Your highest, sorry, your highest finish, yes. not when you end. Yep. Yeah. So your highest finish. So if you finish Legend, uh, you know, obviously you'll start at rank four. Um, you know, if your highest finish is, you know, uh, 10, right? You'll start at 14. So that's going to avoid just the crazy grind that we see each and every season, um, particularly, you know, the folks in Legend, because they, you know, have to go into 15 of Legends always. It's always felt like, why do we have to do this, right? Um, so that's going to be kind of, that's going to be pretty nice. It looks like... Uh... I, I think as well, just, just a quick one. On, yeah, on the sure. other hand, um, I actually think it's good for, for uh, less high-ranked players as well, mm -hmm. like the, the 20 to 10 or whatever, because yeah. instead of going, oh, you know, I spent all month, I finished rank, you know, 12, 
and now I have to go all that again. Well, actually, you start at 16 now, so then you can build on that next month and then build on that the month after. So yeah. there's a bit more of a, a stronger form of progression for the um, the, the lower-ranked players in the game as well. So although it's obviously amazing for Legend players, I think it's pretty good to set a goal, right? If I can yeah. get a few more ranks than last season and I start higher, then it cuts down on the... Yeah, you still have the same amount of time to play as a casual, right? But yeah. you can actually progress further every month. So I think it's actually pretty nice for newer players too. It, yeah. it might be even better for the people that are barely uh, out of legend range. Like, mm -hmm. sure. there's a lot yeah. of people that are grinding their like, rank free at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And then they go back to 17 or whatever. And they don't have a lot of time to play. But they really want to hit legend. Yeah. And if they go then back from rank 1 to rank 5, that's like huge for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It definitely Especially with the floor still time. being in. Yeah, the floors yeah. being in, that's going to be really, really great for them. Um, so this starts after, like, at the end of February. So this reset that we're having tomorrow won't take this into account. So we'll, yeah, we'll still be sent back to, you know, 15, 17, whatever, you know, wherever you are, like, like normal. And then we'll have to make the grind. I think everybody's going to try to get as high as they can possibly get, you know, this next month for sure. So you don't get reset too bad. But um, uh, the rank floors will not change. Uh, streaks will not change. So... That's mainly the difference between the things. So I wanted to talk about, um, you know, I guess, do you think this, uh, well, how do you feel about these changes? Do you like, do you like these changes? Do you think um, it's going to make a huge difference for, uh, let's just say matchmaking first, you know, given the star system? Uh, I personally think these, these changes are so needed and so much fun. Um, it will make Hearthstone more fun, even for the hardcore grinders, mm -hmm. because, I mean, I'm, I got Legend, I think, in total more than 200 times because I'm playing on free servers, right? And then how many games I spend every month yep. on just reaching Legend. And this is kind of like where the game starts for me. And that's like, on average, 200 plus games per server. So that's 600 games at least every month for four years that are kind of just waste. And uh, sometimes you take like... It takes you like six days if you have like a bad month to get to legend or like even more and this is just kind of like a time waste if you're like you're not gonna get legend that's, anyways yeah that's it right it's, it's it's time for me because you know any words like if we want to hit legend we'll just hit legend right it's could just do it it's fine but you have to you know give a, a minimum uh, minimum x amount of time to hit legend especially if you're from rank 16 and that time you're going to get there. It's inevitable that you hit legend, right? You're not just going to, oh, I didn't hit legend this month as a pro player. You know, if you want to hit legend, you'll hit it. But just having to always just throw away that X time a month or even multiple times if you play multiple servers like Yugara, it's just, it just feels pointless. It just feels bad as well. Yeah. It feels like you're wasting your own time and time is one of the most valuable things anyone even has. So these changes are amazing. Like the, the, they're so good for the game on every single level, as we discussed earlier. And if it and it probably will tighten up matchmaking as well because suddenly the players that did only hit rank ten or rank twelve will start at rank sixteen along with everyone else who only hit that rank as opposed to someone who started at rank twenty played a few games legend player rocks on for the day <laughs> seems seems fair you know <laughs> like so yeah this will that... just impact everyone in a very positive way I really like these changes they're awesome yeah I mean it's an interesting dynamic because you know I think the fact that we have short seasons and you know, I think the original purpose of like having us reset and, and really uh, have to climb the ladder was was to have this sense of achievement, right? Like at the end of the season. And I, I think that um, clearly the priority is has switched. You know, it's it's about like not necessarily having that kind of experience, at least for the top end of, of the ladder, like the legend players. There's no, like you just said, all those points were, were like, I'm totally in agreement with you where they don't, you know, it's like a waste of time for these people. Like they don't have to mm -hmm. do it. Um, yeah. so, so I, I think that, um, I still feel like the ladder does have an issue with like creating these type of, you know, uh, different goals, even if the floors, like the floors are supposed to feel like achievements, right? But they aren't, you know, like right now, the way it's like being shown on the ladder, it's not quite there. So I, I feel, I still would like to, I'd like like five rank blocks to be like a bronze, silver, gold type of thing. Uh, but I'm all for, you know, just resetting only for ranks, you know, and things like that. That's definitely awesome. 
Um, and I think for pro players like yourself, Gara, right? Like I, I think I was having like a Twitter conversation with Sidonia and he was like, you know, we're going to be traveling a ton this, this season, you know, with all these tournaments and stuff, like we're not going to have any time to play ladder or so this helps out the pro scene, like in a big way. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. And it's actually crazy if you think about how short our seasons are in Hearthstone, right? Mm -hmm. In which other competitive games do we have like monthly complete MMR reset? And yeah. how much time we have to play to get to high ranks. And like in compared to other games, how, how many players to play multiple servers like in Hearthstone? It's mm -hmm. actually insane how much time we have to invest in that. Yeah. I mean, you don't really, have to play multiple servers. Yeah, I mean, like, if you, you want to choose to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think about the, the bottom end? Do you, do you still think 25 ranks is enough, even with the five stars? I think it probably will be after this because yeah. matchmaking becomes way better. And as you improve, your rank will even pass it. Say, you know, because we have the monthly resets, even past that, you'll improve overall because you will only ever go four backwards. You add on that to rank flaws and you you will progress over time. My only worry is, like, uh, you know, I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty confident. Every year, players are just getting better, right? Mm -hmm. And with this, more and more people hit legend. So we're going to yeah. hit probably China numbers of legend players soon. And yeah. with like 30,000, 40,000 legend players being fine. Yeah. I'm worried about now, is legend really legend if there's 50,000 yeah, uh, yeah, people I, there? <laughs> you know, I, like, yeah, I mean, th this, yeah. these are definitely good changes. I just still think that we still more need we still need more iterations at the top end of the ladder I, and at the bottom end. Yeah. Like for I, me. I will say as well, like... I want to say to that that we had the MMR change, so this is what re what I really like about like that you will not face a top ten thousand legend player if you're like ranked one thousand legend at least. Yeah. So those people will play with yeah. each other. Sure. Their legend players will play. And um and also as well, I I don't know if it's in this article. So if we're about to come to it, you know, my bad. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, Broad did say they do have some other ideas about ladder, but they want to see how this plays out mm -hmm, first before right. they before they do anything else. So it's kind of like a, a stage by stage thing, yeah. as opposed to, yeah, these are ladder changes for the next few years, enjoy. No, you it's know, it's like, I'm sure they're, they're flexible, so. Yeah, it's smart to do that. I mean, I, I think they add the stars, and again, it probably adds like 30% to to the end the bottom end of the ladder and we can kind of see how the matchmaking works there um yeah i just i don't know my gut feeling says that they probably still need more at the bottom like i, I wouldn't i would like to see it to go to 30 you know and then there's this whole argument about oh man people are gonna feel so bad if it like goes to 30 at the bottom but i'm like really are they really gonna feel that bad if it's the, like 25 to 30 like seriously the worry about it is you'll you'll effectively take people lower down the ladder and with only a month to grind for the super casuals they might feel that suddenly you you've just created wood league and and, and you're putting all these people in it do you, you know what i mean like that well, would be it my does, worry but that's but that's the whole like um you know the the whole progression right like if you finish let's say you finish 21 you get sent back to 25 well the next season you're going to try to get up to 18 you know it's not about the guy at 30 going getting to legend it's about the guy at 30 progressing through each season and making his way up the ladder, you know, because like you said, mm -hmm. the ladder's only 30 days. He's not going to be able to climb all the way up there, but that shouldn't be the use case for not doing that, you know. But then there should be like more rewards for reaching like for every five ranks you're climbing. Yep. And right. also they have to change the, the icons. I think they, they look so outdated. Nobody cares about the icons. Like, I, I do. Do you ever well, refer like to yourself to as like, oh, I'm a mountain giant? <laughs> or, I know, mean, I'm... after four years, I mean, it is kind of annoying. I feel like it's... <laughs> what I, what I would like to see is um the card back. Because something that's always annoyed me is if you get ranked 20, it doesn't annoy me now, but maybe as a newer player back in the day. If you get rank 20, you get a card back, right? Great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. If you get rank 5, your rewards are the same, right? More or less. I know there's the cards at the end now that they added. Obviously, they added, like, the, the treasure chest. Um, but I don't know why every, say, X ranks, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's the same card back, but say the border goes silver, then the border goes gold, then the border goes like a diamond border. Oh. You know, for, for like if you finish higher, because it's a small change with not a much of our asset, I imagine that would be required added to the card. But I, I feel like something more to that you can actually have a sense of accomplishment to finish. Because you can open well, packs and say you got like 
some cool epics or whatever. Right. But if you actually said, oh, my card back this season was the golden one as opposed to the silver one, you know, I think like simple ideas like that would, would be nice. I mean, this, this whole concept of having um, card backs or skins or whatever that represent what you are, that just doesn't work. You know, like outside of like the legend card back where people could tell if you're a legend and it was, you know, kind of something, all these kind of very, very small details, I don't think that they play a role that a lot of, you know, either designers or whoever are, are, are hoping that they will. I think they should just, like what you said, gold and silver and all this stuff, just make those ranks of the silver. Oh, they could just make it a league. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, I mean, yeah just yeah, make yeah. that section of the ladder feel yeah. like a new you know portion and, and something to shoot for so and it's easy to actually even say it too it's like oh i'm a plat player in, in hearthstone you know just like mm. every, i mean it's proven like we've done it in so many games now it's a, well, a, a i mean blizzard literally have it in all of their yeah. other games i mean starcraft <laughs> it's like starcraft and, and, uh, and heroes the storm I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, why can't we do it here yeah so i think it would totally work in, in hearthstone at least up until legend legend is like a totally different thing like we'll have to figure something out for that too but at least, you know, in this rank 1 through 25, it totally makes sense. And then you wouldn't even need to add rewards. It's just that that fulfillment of getting to, you know, whatever you're shooting for is, I think, enough. For oh, another cool thing they could add is rank 1 title, as in World of Warcraft. If you finish rank 1 oh, Legend, yeah, the, oh, okay. the next to your name or above your name, it says, like, whatever, you know. I don't know what cha you... challenger duelist. They should yeah. take them from WoW. <laughs> yeah. yeah, relentless gladiator Gara versus. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feels good, man. But anyways, overall, <laughs> you know, great changes. I mean, I think yeah. everybody's you know happy with it, and you know, of course, everybody's going to be asking for more, like like myself. But um, you know, it's good to see them do it, and and, and like Ben said, it, it sounds like they're going to be be uh, keeping a close eye on this and ready to even do more if necessary. And that's all we can ask for. Um, all right, so the next thing we've got on the table here is, um, oh, we've got a sweepstakes that was announced today, which uh, shocked me. Like, I mean, we, we, you know, this is this is like clickbait. 3,000 free card packs, guys. There's, and it's just a quest, you know? So. I'll, I'll be honest. I read it. Like, I saw, you know, there's the image, right? The, this, yeah. The image. I saw it on Twitter, and it was just, I can't, I didn't even look at who the tweet was from. And I was like, oh, what's F2K giving away now? <laughs> oh, 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 you, 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 no, oh no, God. that's yeah. that's what it felt like. like. You know, who's giving away the like a billion packs? This is weird. Right, and then right. looked, it's like, oh, Blizzard are giving away a million packs. Huh. <laughs> okay. I mean, free stuff's always well, free stuff is um is is always nice. I like, can't really argue with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, those of you who might not have seen uh, this announcement today, it's um. Uh, Blizzard's app running a sweepstake that's going basically going to be giving a bunch of, of packs away to folks that complete quests uh, during this uh, year of the mammoth. And, um, you know, there's 3,000 card packs. The specific, specific one is actually one of the, it's like the grand prize. So how you do it is I think you can enter 14 times. Oh, no, it's between uh, February 1st and February 14th. Um, every time you finish a quest, you're entered into this, you know, giveaway, basically. You know, there's going to be some kind of drawing. And there's going to be one grand prize, which is this giant 3,000 card packs. You get this Lich King helm. Pretty awesome. And then a Hearthstone apparel gift pack. To you. Just something enormous. And I think the, the dollar amount is worth $6,900. Like almost $7,000, which actually plays a role. We'll get to that in a second with the $7,000 part. But in, in addition to that, we actually have 1,000 people that will win a Mammoth card bundle, which is um, a, a bundle that has 10 packs from each of the expansions in the Year of the Mammoth. So Angoro, Lich King, uh, the Frozen Throne, and uh, Kobolds and Catacombs. And then finally, 50,000 people will win a Mammoth pack, which is you'll receive three card packs, one from each of the expansions. So in total, it's like 189,000 card packs, I think, that are going to be given away, which is... Pretty amazing. I mean, you can't say that Blizzard doesn't give us anything because that's that's quite a few packs. Uh, but what... the requirement is to do your quests, which yeah, just play most the game. People do anyway. wow. Yeah, yeah, most people it's... do anyway. It's like one of those um, one of those competitions where you know you'll gain an entry by following us on Twitter and and then doing this and then on Facebook and doing this and this and this. Yeah. Except all you have to do is play hostile. You don't have to click any you know <laughs> any yeah. kind of weird you like social media champion, stuff. dude. You just have to just like play right, and you're, <laughs> yeah. you're good. So pretty cool, Gar. What do you think, man? 
Um, I know that I will probably not win any of these prizes. <laughs> yeah, I... Can I never lucky? Even playing with research. 60,000 people win. All right, dude, if you win, man, or if you win, we're going to have to definitely talk about oh, the uh, show. I wonder if someone can win and miss out on the prize just because he's playing the game. He has no idea that there's like a giveaway. He's not checking his emails. You know? I mean, they'll be able to. I mean, I if he can't get hold up. of them through email, then. That's kind of nuts. Well, right? I think it it's just Batman, shows right? up. I think if it's the smaller ones, it's just going to show up. In oh, your sure, packs, sure, sure. Right? I, you know, oh, probably... you look in your 3,000 pack. Yeah. Like... yeah, the 3,000 pack one. Okay, <laughs> we can talk about this now. The 3,000 pack one, the grand prize, there's going to be tax implications on that one. So I, I think that there will be something different for that one. It's um, so tax, it's somewhere in, I don't know exactly what the tax bracket is, but it's like, 25% to 35%, something in there. It really just depends on how high it is. 7,000 is, is is not that much higher than the threshold. I think the threshold is probably like 2,000 or something like that um, in terms of when they, they start taxing you for prize money. Uh, but you will be taxed for that, for sure. And that there's a Reddit thread, I think, that's even out there that says that you'd have to pay like almost $2,000 or $1,500, <laughs> I think, for this uh, to, to win this pack. And... You know, I definitely heard of stories like on the Price is Right and things where people win a car. It's like you win a brand new car and they how, can't leave with it because they can't pay taxes on it. So How do how would they tax something that doesn't have an, an inherent value? Um, like the Lich King Helm, right? Yeah. You cannot buy that. So yeah, there is so maybe no it's only there Maybe no it's only price. the 3000 Maybe it's only the 3000 yeah, Because I would just say, yeah. keep your packs, give me that helmet, and we'll yeah. call it a day. Because if they announce whoever wins this, which I'm sure they will, I might send them a message on Twitter and be like, so, yeah, how much do you want for that helmet? <laughs> no, that helmet I'll, is going to be I'll, I'll cover sweet. the tax on your card packs if I can have the helmet. There we go. That's a good trade. <laughs> Does the helmet talk? Did oh, you tell if me? I is get the helmet, helmet, I will always like, stream with the helmet. If it's, the, if it's like the full... Um, <laughs> It's like the display when they have a, a oh okay HQ, yeah that's, right that's it's awesome. like a full metal yeah. like life size Lich King helm that yeah. would be insane no, yeah, be I want cool. to win that one I would go to every event with the helm <laughs> only stream yeah. with the I helm wear... wear that on stage dude that that is gonna be awesome. <laughs> imagine winning BlizzCon and winning the <laughs> yeah, helm before the putting on the helm yeah, buying <laughs> Frostmon as well oof. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I actually, all you have to do is really get with Elky and just see if you can borrow one of his like like cosplay things. And I'm sure he has a Lich King helmet somewhere in his closet. Uh, but yeah, so overall, you know, these prizes are cool. The tax thing is definitely something that you know could be tricky. It, it might be, I don't know. It might have been easier just to give cash that you know. I guess people could have you know bought packs with versus actual packs themselves. But, but isn't it way um, too much for like who wants three thousand packs from one expansion? You don't I mean, need that many. No, that, that's a, well, that's no, no, it's it's a, it's a thousand. Expansion. It's a thousand from each expansion. Yeah. Oh damn! <laughs> and also, that, that's so that's for players like dust, us. Man. That's enough <laughs> dust to craft everything in the next expansion. So that's pretty. That, sick. That's way more dust than the cast. That, that's yeah. enough dust to cast uh, to to probably uh, um, craft everything in two or three expansions. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. So the full um, golden collection dream. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, maybe. Probably still not even close to enough. Yeah. So, anyways, awesome. I mean, it's really great. You know, from the Blizzard standpoint, I hope they you know figure out this kind of tax thing, obviously. Um, but uh, overall, just them giving us free stuff, it's awesome and amazing. And um, you know, hopefully, people on oh, Reddit give them oh, at least some credit for doing that. Also, just the side thing, there is the bundle as well, right? That you can actually buy. That that's uh, part of the giveaway. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, right, right. So there's a cheaper bundle here, right here. So you can actually buy ten from each of the packs for. It looks like uh, this one's sixty nine nine pounds, which I love. That, I love that it's randomly in pounds. I know. Like, like, uh, what is that? I don't even I'm know like... what that is. Is That nineteen ninety nine in in dollars. It's Something about like twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's about twenty dollars. It's definitely cheaper than the normal. Oh, that's game. why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Oh man, oh, God. we're not gonna get into that discussion too. <laughs> Uh, and I think you can enter, yeah, maximum ent entries are 14 per Battle.net account. Uh, and one per entry per day. Okay, so you can only... Yeah, because you get one quest a day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so... Okay, so, oh, the quests will actually show up as enter a giveaway type of thing, I guess? Uh, I, I Probably, but also yeah. it's just that you gain one quest a day, so if you do one quest a day, that's the max you can do anyway. Mm, yeah, but what, what, they're, what they're holding against is that you can effectively gain, like, three entries on the first day. 
because you can just yeah. stall quests and then yeah. go. But <laughs> knowing Hearthstone players will totally min, game min, that. Min max that stuff. We, we got to get that extra point oh oh one percent chance of winning that. Oh yeah, hey, that Lich King ham deserves it. <laughs> yeah, Pretty sure even Crypt will go for that. <laughs> he absolutely doesn't need it. Dude, Crypt could just hire that whoever made that. <laughs> Did he even make a, a, an yeah. Excel sheet about how to maximize the, the chance of winning the Grand Prix? Yeah, yeah, I know, totally. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> will make it. I'm surprised it's not even already on Reddit. Some uh, some of our math geniuses out there. Okay, well, um, let's see. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, I had something. Watchstone is going to be t tonight. I wonder... I wonder if Watchstone is going to be as interesting. And Watchstone, by the way, guys, is something that like Just Saying typically hosts, and uh, it's something I always look forward to. On the last day of the season, you know, there's always a bunch of people uh, that get together and they just kind of like watch everybody who's like really will, close to the top. I don't. Will Watchstone even exist anymore? I, I don't even know. That's kind of because the question. You, every, I mean, I mean, you'll answer this better than me, Gara. But if I was pushing Fire Legend, I would show us offline. Mm -hmm. And people are doing. Yeah. People are building three versions That's, of the same deck. Uh, with yeah. different characters and card backs to try and hide as much information as possible. So oh. there's no one to spectate. Such there's no one to click spectator. Exactly. Like, like, that's one of also, the biggest flaws. But yeah, yeah, you continue. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, also, with the ladder changes, Rat Race is going to be a lot yep. shorter than last I was going to bring that up, too. I mean, they, there's a couple community events that I've particularly enjoyed that I think are going to be yeah. greatly affected by these changes. And you named them, <laughs> basically watch them. I mean, Rat Race, if you only have to go four ranks, I mean, <laughs> was... that's like that's like two hours for these guys. <laughs> well, to, to be fair, though, there's um, it, it might actually end up being harder because everyone will stay close together in ranks yeah. because everyone will start at rank four, right? So it I might guess. take longer than you imagine, but it's going to take less time than going from 60, obviously, you know? Well, yeah. they extend it to all three servers. Yeah, it's on all three. All three. Yeah, I guess I could oh do that. They'll all start at rank four, and then who gets like the most legends or whatever. Or it could be just like whoever ends up the highest after twenty four hours. You know that that sort of thing. I don't know. Sure, yeah. just have like a legend yeah. fight. Like, why not? Right? Yeah, yeah. But but you're right. I mean, I I think the it's a little bit you know messier. You know, in terms of yeah. before it was just like very clear. You know, who can get to legend first because it was such a big feat in twenty four hours. So, um. Okay, well, uh, next thing, next big news that happened was that we got card nerfs. Heck yeah, we got the um, at least a few of them. We didn't get quite as many as we were hoping for, but we, we definitely got four uh, nerfs that a lot of the community was waiting for for a while now. So um, in the upcoming, what, 10.2 uh, update that's going to be happening this next month. We don't know if it's like next week or you know a couple weeks after that, who knows. But definitely in February, we are going to be seeing um, you know four cards nerfed, which are Bone Mare, Corridor Creeper, Patches, and Razakis. Uh, or Raza, not, not Razakis, Raza the Chained. And um, let me just bring them up one at a time. We're just talking about one at a time here. Overall though, I guess before we do that, like overall, what do you, what do you guys think just with uh, these four changes? Just, just changes generally. Like, are you liking? Are you liking the timing of it? Are you liking just the volume of it? Like, any comments generally? Do you want to go first, Gar? Okay, I have so much to say about. Oh, okay. Just, just a general got... overview first. We'll get into each one in a <laughs> second here. First thing is change is good. Changes keeps always the game fresh, right? Any kind of change is good, even if it would be horrible change. Still a change. Changes up the game. Yeah um timing questionable right especially regarding patches it's like it's been in the game being a problem for almost two years and then one or two months before the rotation happens they find enough patches it's more like an insult for me at least because it is a huge problem in the game and then changing it really like so close to the rotation that's kind of like yeah we know patches is a problem <laughs> kind of it's, okay. uh... it's like it's, it's a lot of free dust, though. <laughs> it is a lot of free dust. You get dust. full dust refunds right before it's about to rotate out. That sounds like a gift to me, Gar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but as a competitor. Yeah. Uh, another thing is when you hear balance changes, according to Blizzard, a card never will get buffed. So you always know with the trend they're going that every card you will see in the balance changes will be unplayable <laughs> afterwards. Uh, yeah, this is just what history has shown. 
with a very very few exceptions like Leroy is I think one exception which was and yeah and gadgets and gadgets yeah. but yeah. It, it generally the cards are like nerfed to the ground so they are unplayable <laughs> afterwards yeah and they never get buffed so it's usually always just nerfs it's kind of like yeah that's true have we ever seen a it's buff? not really balance have we no. ever seen a buff that historically no, I don't no. Think we, yeah we the only time it. we've seen that's what crazy you could like not consider a direct nerf it's just a card change uh so for example unleash got changed so much that i'm not saying it's a it's a it's it was not definitely nerf. nerfed though come on no that, no that's yeah not but, even, but i mean like it's a it's a brand new card yeah it was redesigned what i mean it's it was not still like nerfed. it was yeah, still yeah. not like powerful or as powerful right um okay well that that's an interesting you know observation i mean i i think that I'm not sure why. I mean, generally speaking, whenever you you know you're making changes and you're nerfing things, you're trying to keep the power level down, right? And because there's a certain there's only en enough runway for you know, given that we, we the, how the game's designed with 30 health and stuff, there's only so high that you can go with power. So I would Haven't think that most commented? changes would go. I think they've commented in the past that they don't particularly intend to buff any cards. Yeah, but I just I mean, yeah. Anyways, I'm not sure why they would make that entire you know delineation because. You know, let's say you just wanted to buff the Weasel Tunnel, or you know, you should have that. They, they actually, I actually asked Ben in person when I was at the HQ. They don't want cards to see play that are already like in the game for a long time. They always want the new cards to see play instead. That's also, why. Also, as well, there is the the card pool is is so big mm -hmm. that like, wh where do you even aim a? Buff. Does Harvest Golem need a buff? You know, it's like they, they yeah, buff and nerf cards yeah. with, with release of sets, right? It's easier to see what's too strong than what could do with a buff because there's so many cards and there's so many cards that don't get played at a high level, which yeah. means that do you, do you buff them all or do you just nerf yeah. this one card that's a problem? You know, so I, I, I completely understand it. I'm not saying it's 100% correct. Yeah, but... more cards will see automatically play if you nerf the most problematic. Exactly. The yeah, card. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like a, I mean... a sideways buff, right? Yeah, the, I mean, the thing about buffing for me is just that, um, you know, like, Hearthstone, generally speaking, has been, you know, we're still kind of, I don't know if we're still in the early stages, but, you know, up until, I don't know, even maybe even this year or even a year ago, we're still in the very early stages of designing cards. So literally, there are a million ideas, right, like in terms, and there's still like plenty of ideas that they can go to, but I don't like the general philosophy of like, oh, you know, who cares about like if the cards were already out there, we don't want to change them and make them any better. We'll just come out with new ones, you know, like new versions of the same thing. You know that that's definitely not good either. It's like just literally come out with the same card, name it something different, but just give it, you know, something a little bit better. I, I don't really, I, I don't really love that. It's not bad. I mean, I, it's definitely something they've been doing. I think for a while now, and it's like it's just a small thing. But you know, like why not change something that's already designed well, except for one little thing, you know? So. Um, that, that's one a minor thing, I, thing, though. It's it's not a big one thing. I would deal. like, and I'm not 100 percent on on the timings of all the nerfs when they've come in, of course. Mm -hmm. But I would kind of like it if it was kind of just like official that halfway through an expansion's life there would be changes or a patch of some kind, J just to like mix it up a little bit. Because I feel like in terms of rotations, we yeah. can go a long time without changes. And like Gary said, I'm complete with Gary. It's like just change the game, like. It, well, you could you could have broken game, these four. Right? You could have broken these four into halfway marks between each of the expansions. Like if you would no, have just changed and, and that patches, the yeah, game. you would have just just yeah. changed patches. Like let's say in between, you know, uh, Frozen Throne and and Kobolds and Catacombs, right? And then just changed. I don't know, Raza, uh, yeah, Raza, uh, Raza, well, Raza, Raza, Raza could have been together. Yeah, yeah. Raza, yeah. Right now, for me, it feels like like they do so few balance changes. How often times do we have a balance change? Once per year. No, no, no. I think it's two, two to three a year. I think maybe two, mm -hmm. roughly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. So I mean, the, the was, reset too. And, well, there was the there was the um, thingy change, right? The druid change. Uh, uh, plague. Yeah. The well, pla plague was changed. Uh, innervate was gone, right? Um, yeah. Or innervate was changed, obviously. Uh, Fire so, warax, etc. Like they, yeah. they were this year. We had year. two. One. We had two. Yeah in the in the what is, span of okay, a year so around two balance changes okay then it's very weird that the pa patches wasn't nerfed at that point <laughs> because right now it feels like okay patches is a problem uh, but we have the next balance update like in one year from now we will do it then <laughs> I don't, and I don't, so I mean, just leave it in the game for like a year i mean 
we have so many problematic cards which you immediately know they're like a pro like with corridor creeper right now if you compare them corridor creeper uh i mean the expansion came out in december there was trinity series right afterwards and you could see right already from that tournament how oppressive corridor creeper is and then right after the tournament corridor creeper was everywhere and this is a very fast nerf considering yeah. all nerfs we had one in of the fastest i think actually and uh, what, what, it's January, and the expansion came out in December, and Corridor Creeper is getting nerfed, right? Yeah. That's actually super fast for Blizzard. But like, if you compare it like from a yeah. competitive standpoint, we had all the Pro Tour, Pro Tour qualifiers, all of them, the Sydney one, the NA one, the European one. We had the entire first season of the ladder with Corridor Creeper, which was a, obviously a huge problem in the game because it's getting nerfed. And like Seed Story Trinity Series, all these tour tournaments, and it, it is a fast nerf. And there's like other cards that are getting nerfed because they're way too oppressive, very bad for competitive uh, Hearthstone, like patches. And honestly, Corridor Creeper is not so much of a problem if patches is not played. If, if you look at Corridor Creeper in a nutshell, Corridor Creeper is not played in all tempo decks like Secret Mage, just because you don't play patches. You require uh, the minions to, to make it cheaper, faster. Yeah. Also, Corridor Creeper is not as good against control decks. It's more like an oppressive card in the tempo mirrors because both people play patches and both people play a lot right. of cheap stuff. Yeah. I will say and... in terms of uh, reaction speed, something I don't want Blizzard to do is watch a tournament, see one card, blow a yeah, tournament yeah. up and then go nerf. Because it's like, well, in, in two weeks, that card might not be played anymore. It, you cannot know. Obviously, Corridor Creeper was a great example of, holy shit, this needs a change. But I don't want Blizzard to knee-jerk yeah, it's something I actually like about Blizzard is that even with Yogg, for example, when everyone wanted it changed, I was like, I don't mind the fact they give it some time just to see because you cannot knee jerk reaction nerf cards because then what if the card just gets removed and then you're like, oh, well, maybe this wasn't such a big problem and we've just lost yeah. this card now because they, they've well, obliterated it. You know, just, um, I, I, I generally agree with like the things that you're saying, but just as devil's advocate, like in terms of like patches, for instance, um, I have this feeling that maybe like Fiery War X, that, that nerf was like in the mix because beginning of the year, right? Py Pirate Warrior was a huge thing, right? In the beginning of the year. That was still like around. Obviously, patches added to it. Fiery War X was a huge part of it. I'm wondering if they tried to keep patches around just so that tempo would stay very, you know, prevalent in the meta um, until they were ready to basically, you know, kind of reset everything again. I'm wondering if it was more of a bridge, like, and that's more of the reasoning for doing it versus like Corridor Creeper, which is, like you said, it, they're reacting much quicker to Corridor Creeper. Um, but you know, who knows? I mean, it, that's something that obviously Blizzard will have would you know they know what's going on in the background. But I feel like that is such something that stands out so big that um, either it's like a, a process issue of of you know not being able to change I don't know certain things at certain times, or it was purposeful. You know, and you know, it it was to bridge like changes that they were already planning, like like the the fiery war axe. Like maybe they still wanted pirate war to be played, but you know, so taking out patches in fiery war axe would literally have killed like just that deck would be not even. Like, it, right now, it's like maybe fringe, you know, like rank, I don't know, tier five, you know, some, somewhere around there. But man, if you took out both of them, it would literally be just worthless that that deck altogether. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, that's the only thing I can think of, maybe, I guess, to why they didn't change it. And outside of yeah. Creeper, Cobalts didn't really have that many aggro cards, right? No. That, not, off the yeah. top of so my head. So, yeah, so aggro like, was like, you know, outside of, of these cards that we saw that came out in, in Cobalts and Catacombs, if you didn't have Creeper, didn't have Spiteful, didn't have all, you know, a lot of the, in even Bone, well, Bone Mare, I guess, came out in, in Lich King. You know, I think we, we needed patches, actually, to keep that tempo type of meta like very powerful you know very strong in the, the meta game otherwise I control would disagree go you think so okay uh, I, I it's just that they are very bad at designing ag aggressive cards you can design good aggressive cards just not um the one drops that one drops can't have more than one attack i think like firefly is a great one, uh, one drop that you can play in agro tempo decks yeah, and i think that the diamond is the perfect example that you can make a card that is super needed for a hunter the class and make it playable and it's not like oppressive or uh, too overpowered or anything like that it's just a I, vanilla one free beast i will say i think aggro cards are way harder to design than control cards yeah. 
because yeah. you have less stats yeah, to play with, right? Like yeah. you, you increase plus one on something, <laughs> yeah, it's and huge. you make or break it's that crazy card. Huge. It's just broken it's or it's trash, you know. So I think it's very hard to design, but I do agree. Yeah. I think like we've seen probably the most heinous cards uh, that that have been caused the most effect yeah. in the aggro cards. A lot I mean, of the they, time. like just just to kind of go back on the 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 patches thing, I think they could have nerfed patches right as K and C came out, like uh, Cobalt and Catacomb, because we saw awesome cards right in terms of for tempo and whenever um kobolds and catacombs came out so could they have done it like two months ago they probably could have done it two months ago but i'm thinking it stuck around for as long as it did be, you know because they wanted just aggro to be strong so also um, as well i and and i don't know about this but it how worth is it to them to on a, a business or, or an actual uh, logistical standpoint how worth is it for them to say oh we'll nerf one card this month but we know we're nerfing some other cards in two months. You, maybe that comes into it. I'm not yeah, saying it's fair I, for the players I, or whatever, but going on, I don't yeah. know. But but yeah. maybe they don't want to be like, oh, let's put out this patch to change this one card. And then next month, we've got to put out this other big patch to change this other card yeah. and keep messing people about, basically. And um, so I, I don't know about that, but maybe. They, they have a better picture of just like what things look like, too, after resetting yeah. stuff. But one thing for certain, we'll, let, why don't we just like start talking about the nurse and then we'll, we'll get even deeper into it. Um, okay, so the first one we got, we're looking at, is Quarter Creeper. So it goes from a 5-5 five five to a 2-5. That was, like, the only change. Nothing else in terms of the text or the mana cost or anything like that changed. So first obvious question is, was this a good change? And would you have changed it like this? This is the only nerf I hate. <laughs> I, think I, I picked I a good one nerf. to start with then. Yeah. I think it's horrible Wait, nerf. Do you think yeah. the card should have not been nerfed or how it's nerfed? how it's nerfed is bad they've just th yet again yeah. thrown a card under the bus um so i w when this card first got like uh it was put in the mass mass release right after they did the daily releases of the expansion and i glanced at the card and then never really looked at it until you know like team lol played it in trinity i was like oh shit um i thought this card read when one of your minions right. dies i remember you saying that i genuinely thought that and then when obviously you know oh, nerfs are coming corridor creeper i was like that sounds like a pretty okay nerf, you know, like, uh, but th now they've just made the minion, like, stupid. Like, it's a 2-5? Yeah, you can get it out early, but d does any uh, deck care that much about a 2-5? I don't know. It's just, this just is the jumping that, on the attack This feels is the bad. part that makes me laugh the most. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> this exactly. is the thing that makes me laugh. It's like, wow, okay. So, yeah, <laughs> on average, it probably is going to be, like, a, a carrying grub. It's probably going to be a little better. Um, I mean, I still think that the card is not bad. I mean, you're still going to be played when it's free. So, you know... Are you going to put it in your deck, though? Like, a 2-5? I, mean, I, I don't think it's... I mean, I don't think it's, like, that, like, stomped no. to the ground, though. Oh, it, I, think it's, I think it's obliterated. I think this card is long gone. If it was a 3-5, you could consider it. But 2-5... Well, two, two attack kills nothing! So here, here's uh, yeah, thing. exactly. You want to play it in aggressive decks, and the stats are like too defensive. You just don't want this card. I, I think a five-two would have been better. No, no you know, I, I would have like. I, I think that if we were to kept the same stats, I think even just adding a taunt to it, I think would have been kind of a, an interesting thing to do. You know, because it could still protect. You know, like in an aggro deck, and it would it would still have like a little bit more value than just like a, a straight you know vanilla two-five type of thing. So um, would I have changed it this way? I don't think. I mean, I wouldn't have changed it this way, but. Um, if you're going to choose basically the body to be the, you know, the biggest culprit for, for why it's so strong, then I would have at least added that ability to, you know, protect. Because, I mean, even if it's like, it's a free taunt, right? It's kind of like um, uh, the pirate, right? The um, the Corsair. Like, for for, it for me, like it's, the, it's the fact that it doesn't kill a dire mole. What? It's like, what? It doesn't kill a mole. Oh, it doesn't kill a mole. Yeah. No, no, is that you know, really a concern a for you? No, no, but it, it's how I mean, pitiful the attack is. I'm surprised yeah. that they didn't either just increase the mana. They could have made it 10 mana. Yeah, that's So it comes out that one, maybe two turns later. Or they just put it to your own minions. Because this card, like, if someone played a 2-5 against me, and they've put a 2-5 in their deck, I'm feeling very confident about that game. No matter what the game looks like, I'm like they put this in their deck. I'm feeling good. Well, I mean, we there was some discussion about um, was it Happy Ghoul for a while too, right? And that was like, oh yeah, we're, you know that's a good tempo card too because it's basically free. I mean, anything that's free 
that's going to be cheap is going to be pretty darn good. Happy Ghoul has three attack, Chairman. <laughs> okay, sure. And I'm just... <laughs> Like I said, I mean, the, the three attack argument is kind of like my argument, I think, with just it being taunt. You know, it, it just needs something, sure, sure. you know, some kind of purpose that that's, you know, you know not just having a, a very weak attack, you know, type of thing. Um, but Gara, like, how would you have changed it? Um, like, it requires playtesting. Uh, I'm very curious about how it feels uh, if it only redu the cost gets reduced by per turn, right? Um if it resets after every turn. So basically the minions have to die in the turn. Oh, okay. To, to make it cheaper. But then you can still like, for example, you can board clear everything. So you can play this card in multiple decks, like in control decks as well, like big mage. You go for a big board clear and then you play this card. And this would also rebalance the fact that you, you know, when you top deck the card, in it's really bad. Then when you have it in your starting hand, this is this whole draw RNG, mm -hmm um debate that is going on that Hearthstone feels like the games are decided by turn one who drew which cards in the starting hand with Kalisev, with patches with corridor creeper also this this is why i think Hearthstone gets worse uh for for spectating because you see the starting hands for example now if you see rosain undoing the starting hand and the opponent had drew patches yep. you, you kind of know who's going to win the game and this is kind of like with corridor creeper you play an agro mirror and, and one player has two corridor creepers the other one has none uh, but it gets interesting if you have to kill the minions in the turn, right? So it makes the tradings and saving minions and all that kind of stuff way more like skillful and interesting. Um, then I think the stats are fine of having 5-5. Five, five. But I don't know like if the card would just be too trash, right? Because it's very hard if you have to kill that many minions per turn. Mm -hmm. I know I, I, it will definitely not be broken. Like this, it's just it's just bad. I think really? it's I, like two attack is just if you just look I, at the nerf free less attack is huge well it is but so here's the thing like i i don't think it's it's not going to be played but that doesn't actually mean it's like terrible it just means it's not being played because it's not broken anymore like everything that's played these days is basically broken so yes. it, that you know that i, I want to make sure that people understand the relativity of that because you know a two five you know quarter creeper basically at a one zero to two mana that's actually good. You know what I mean? Like there, of course, there is some type of conditional to it. But I'm wondering to the extent is could this card as a two five now just reduce its mana even if it's in deck? Like you, you know what I mean? Like that. That's how like <laughs> low the attack. Okay, is. if it was zero mana. Okay, so uh, all right, Raven. Let's just say after turn five, this is zero mana. Would you play it? Like let's, let's just say it just it, turns to well, zero it, mana it, after turn five. Yes. After turn five, you would play it, and right? even if it's in my deck. Yeah, yeah. If it's like in that I, mean, I mean, just just period, just wherever it doesn't matter. Like, okay, you yeah, play then... it, right? Probably. Oh my god! Seriously, you can buff it with Kalisev. It becomes a free six. <laughs> god, I'm just play right. hunter and play. I I, I don't think there. it's. I think I think it's like it, it's balanced to like Hearthstone 2015, and right now balanced 2015 Hearthstone is bad. <laughs> like and and um so yeah this card will not be played anymore but you know it it's kind of funny how people you know we, we have different goggles now i think in terms of looking at cards and we, you know, we have a standard that's super high after kobolds and catacombs for sure um especially see. with spiteful summoner that changed yeah spiteful so summoner is like you can get 12 12 out in it's... agro decks on turn six with like a 4-4 four, four body attached to it yeah all right next up we got bone mare all right, this one's a little, again, pretty subtle. They just changed the mana cost of it from 7 to 8. And, um, you know, Bone Mare was an auto add, right, in, in every single tempo deck. Uh, it's a common card, too, so we literally saw it from everybody at every rank. Uh, so is is one mana increase enough to, you know, see less play of this card? Definitely. I think right now it only sees play in Tempo Rogue, to be honest. Because Agro Paladin is, like, too fast. Murloc Paladin as well, they play Divine Favor. Um, yeah, Zoo plays it though. Yeah, yeah, Zoo I've, and, I've, and... I've seen it in, in some spiteful lists, de de depending, uh, because it was a good follow up after turn six. But it depends on the list, and, and the, there's like a hundred variations of, of spiteful yeah. builds. Right. So The problem but really I... is that eight mana slot, we have good cards for eight mana. Most classes, like Paladin has mm -hmm. Tyrion and, yeah. and Lich King. Yeah. and the main reason why you played Bonemir is because it costs seven mana, and there's nothing better for seven mana. I, 
I think this is almost a future proof in the card, to be completely honest. Because imagine if in the next expansion there's more tempo cards and strong turn sixes, then oh you just God. lose. You just no that exactly, right? You just lose. If they if there's more strong turn five and six. Like can. <laughs> yeah, that you just you just lose because Bowman on top of a, a tempo push is just that too like that bit too fast. Whereas uh, you know, a turn six, then you have like a kind of, you know, then turn seven, then turn eight for Bowman gives the decks like more time to answer and more time to answer the, yeah. the setup board, which I think th I think like, this is the opposite. I think this is just a decent change. But Bowman is going to be in the game for quite a long time yet. So if they release anything remotely good, Bowman is going to continue to be absurd. So yeah. I think a man is pretty fair. And it also nerfs uh, Free from Amber, of course, and Spiteful from Free. Yeah. I mean, that was... Uh, not, like, not Spiteful, but the Archivist guy. Right. I mean, Gar is saying that the seventh slot... The seventh slot is, is the hardest slot. Like, it, there's not many yep. great cards. So Bone Mare being one of the best cards in the game and, you know, follow it up. Karen, what... You know, it's, it's probably a, a nerf to Karen now because Karen's not going to even be played anymore because I don't think you can get that, those kind of consecutive turns like you, you had before. And, you know, it's kind of cool to see Karen just pop up in the meta for just a little bit, right? Um, but, you know, now that's going to be eight. Yeah, I, I don't see it being that great it's still you know it's still good value and, and like you said I, I think it's it's just good enough that it'll still stick around but just won't and, be everywhere and also outside the scope of, of competitive level play it's still a common card that is going to work yep. very well for players with low collections it's mm -hmm. still a very strong i would still recommend players put this in their decks if you're fairly new to hearthstone you can get this card it's still strong yeah. is this good in arena uh, oh i'm i have Probably oh, less games than yeah. everyone in Twitch chat and arena. No, so yeah, no you can't have less games. Than I mean, it was broken for seven mana, so I guess it's yeah. still insta pick in arena. I think so, right? I mean, as long as you have yes, any absolutely. kind of tempo, any kind of tempo, this is huge. But if you it's don't, probably still it's, at, at, like... it's probably still at least good, right? Yeah, you know, like yeah. not amazing, but at least good. Good more times than not, which is still good, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got. All right, this is the. This is the big one that Trigar has a lot to say about. All right, patches. So the text changed on patches quite a bit. So instead of charge, um, basically, it's no charge. <laughs> Actually, it didn't change that much. It I was going to say, did the removed, text change one word? <laughs> one bold, bold word, which was charge. And that like makes a huge difference. Um, so yeah, so now patches, you know, whenever you summon a, a, or play a pirate, it comes out from your deck, but it just, you know, there's no charge on it. Um, so all right, yeah. What do you guys think? I think this was a good change to it. Besides the I fact that this... when they made the change, is this a good change? I, I, I wish this was just how the card was. Um, I also read, uh, in terms of what you were talking about earlier, Gara, about uh, you know draws making such a huge impact. Because obviously it, it's, it's a huge issue for the players. It's a bit of an issue for the casters as well when we've got yeah. to try and make a story of this game. And it's like, <laughs> oh, he's got Raza and Anduin and this guy just drew patches. So... Uh, um, so there goes someone the winning percentage by like 15 percent right yeah, yeah. But someone mentioned that it would be interesting to consider if it gains charge if drawn but comes out without charge if played with a pirate because mm. then that lessens the the draw factor being a huge issue and a one one for one that has charge isn't it, it's ball it's stone tusk ball it's not like an op card mm -hmm. right so that that was a very interesting change actually that i thought would would kind of uh balance the whole well i drew patches now i lose but overall I, I wish this is just how patches work it's still a decent minion you still gain a 1-1 for playing a pirate in an aggro deck that you're probably playing anyway still gets buffed by pirates like captain for example i, th I think it's pretty nice now it's like a pre-nerf tasca totemic after kelisif yeah <laughs> that always <laughs> summons a totem golem <laughs> <laughs> God. Well, well, one yeah, thing from South Sea Captain. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a, a Tasca Totemic that always summons a Totem Golem now after the nerf. Kinda, I guess. Kinda, kind of, sorta. Um, so I mean, it's what, a free free. It's a free yeah, free. it's similar. I give you that. I give you. It's it's a little similar. Um, so the one thing right. I would say about you know, this change, at least, is that. You know, better that they change it than not change it, though, Gar. Right? Is at least they show that you know they care I mean, at least something the about wild. Is about to happen. Yeah, but I feel like I mean, you're, much... but you're looking at it purely from a standard standpoint. Like yeah. Wild's gonna have to deal with this yeah. card. So if it was still the same, yeah, if, Wild. If you, if you, if you played yeah. Wild, Gar. <laughs> <It's... laughs> 
Yeah. It's, it's like it was like, <laughs> the craziest fucking greedy drag uh, decks. Cannon's, Cannon's a good card. Cannon's a good card, but I, I don't think Cannon actually matches some of the crazy greedy cards no, uh, no, decks no. out there, but... Um, yeah, I, so I least, as well. there's there's at least some regard for wild. That's that's all I'll say. I I will say as well, like um, you know, say say the say the nerf, right? Because you say, oh, the the nerfs are a slap in the face to to the Hearthstone players or whatever, right? Because they're so late with patches, for example. It's like, well, they could have just not nerfed it till rotation, and then you get another couple of months of it. You know, it's it because it, it's not going to change till the next expansion's out. So. Um, I think having like two months of not having this issue is better than having this issue till rotation. But yeah, it'll Agreed. be interesting. I think what's important here is all the aggro decks might not all run South Sea Captain and, and any pirates they can. Because one of the issues I saw quite a lot, or complaint, should I say, was that due to cards like um, Bone Mare, but especially Corridor Creeper, Patches, and Kalisek, all the aggro tools look, uh, aggro decks look the same. Um, yeah. I mean, I come on, we had priests week, running right? South Sea. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, it I think, is I think ridiculous. I've seen mages, it's, like normal yeah. mages with with Kalisef. and and no one no one wants to see. Uh, one of the fun things about Hearthstone is the different classes, right? It's just like yeah. magic, yeah. different colors. No one wants to see all the classes play the same cards, right? That's terrible. So this this will help that as well. I think it's a fine nerf. It's good. Yeah, I think so. And I think I still think the card's pretty. So it's okay. Like it's I think still the, fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the value's still pretty solid. Getting a free card played on the board is 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 definitely pretty nice. Um, especially, but you have to have that pirate synergy, of course. Okay, let's go on to Raza. All right. So Raza the Chained, uh, basically a one <laughs> a character change on the card. So pretty subtle changes all just overall. It goes from zero power hero power costing zero to hero po power costs one mana, and that is a huge change in terms of of Highlander Priest and just the uh, amount of damage they can output in one turn. Uh, so overall, uh, what do you think this? Do you think this is a good change to Raza? So again, another little slap to the face, I would say. It's like Rasekus Priest is like a huge problem for how long now? A year? And then it got buffed with the previous... Like it was the best deck before the expansion and then it got Psychic Scream, like the best bot key in the game for the best deck in the game. Very similar to like Jade Druid when it got... When Jade Druid was the best deck, one of the best decks and then it got Ultimate Infestation and Spreading Plague, which was obviously a huge problem. And then they got nerfed. Very similar to Rasekus Priest, one of the best decks in the game, if not the best deck, and it got a huge buff of the Psychic Scream. And then how long are we playing? I mean, Razakus Priest Stone is around now for... I don't. I just don't remember. I just feel like everyone is playing well, for, the deck for so long. Um, almost since Lich King, right? Yeah. Because uh, Anduin came in in Lich King. Well, Anduin came in Lich King, so yeah. yeah I mean, It's such an oppressive deck. Almost every tournament ban strategy evolves around either targeting this deck or banning this deck, and... Well, actually, it's, these days it's been Warlock more than it has been. So, yeah, but they're targeting then Priest. Yeah. Like all yeah, the if, other if you ban Warlock, you, you you should be Priest. But my... my so, one, I, I like this change because I actually like the overall idea of what Raza Priest is. You know, like the cool sort of combo-y, you play a card, mm -hmm. hero power, play a card, hero power is kind of cool. Um, it being one mana is just way less oppressive than zero because you, you can't do as stupid things as you can with that deck now. Um, but I, I will say that there's there's always going to be a strongest deck, like no yeah. matter what. Yeah. And I don't think in any meta we've decided what an acceptable level of strongest deck is. Because people are like, oh, patrons, insane. Hunter with Undertaker's insane. Yeah, they were all insane. But we've never, I don't think we've ever had a meta where anyone's gone, this is the strongest deck in Hearthstone, but it's reasonably strong. It's okay. Everyone's always said the strongest deck is too oppressive. And in the strongest deck, yes, band strategies and lineups are going to revolve around it because it's the strongest deck and overall deck in the game. That's just it's the way any game works. It's the same with MOBAs and, and champion picks, yeah. right? There's a strong set of champions. You build your, your strategy around those um, or, or beating those, obviously. But I, I think like this change is good. Um, it's a shame that it wasn't just a little bit earlier. I, I don't think it needed it like a month after Lich King. I think it's fine to have the I deck know. around for a bit because it was crazy. And watching the evolution of that deck was interesting. But I think like it probably did go on for a little bit too long. Well, I, mean, for, so uh, for I personally hate this change. 
I think <laughs> that with most of these changes, it really shows me that Blizzard doesn't understand the game or how the decks are played. For example, I love Razakus Priest because it's a very high skill cap deck. Yeah. That's very high skill cap to play it optimal. Mm -hmm. Like the, the win rates, this is why it's always like shown as a tier three deck. People laugh about it on win, win, win the wish syndicate or has to replay like always shown as a tier three deck, but it's actually the strongest deck in the game just because of the skill cap. Uh, but the problem about this deck is the OTK. It's something that should not exist in Hearthstone. You cannot just kill someone in one turn and there's like no counterplay to it. And that's not okay. Like, um, I don't know if this is a thing, like is a good change in terms of that. Obviously, you can't OTK anymore because of that. But that was like the core problem with Rasekus Priest. This is why you couldn't play Control Paladin or Control Shaman or because healing didn't matter because you died from thirty to zero. Same with Demon Lock. You just died from thirty to zero. Like Jade Druid counted it because yeah, because Jade Druid can <laughs> out armor it with like twenty armor and they can't get out OTK. That's like the only counterplay to it. Uh, you could have changed actually Mind Blast or rotated Mind Blast to, to Hall of Fame, then you can't kill someone anymore. And I think then you can really try to outplay Razakus Priest. You can out-resource them, out-heal them, whatever. It's just the OTK was the huge issue. Like just like Raza, Anduin, Velen, uh, Velen and uh, Mind Blast was or is already 20 damage. It's just mm. way too much. And then Radiant so, Elemental plus uh, Spite right. is... 32 damage. That's like a huge problem. I think OTK is a huge problem. And they've seen that in, in, in you, we've seen that if with previous nerfs that they don't want that, right? With Force on Commander, Leroy Jenkins, um, Arcane Golems, Power Overwhelming, this like conceal shenanigans. OTK is not good for the game. It's not fun to play against it. But it's same with Freeze Mage with Emperor and then reducing all the Ice Lances and just killing one in one turn and that you can't do anything against it. Yeah, there has so, to be a counter so to it. The the whole concept of, all right. So and let me first off by by saying that um, I, I'm I'm with you there, Gar. In terms of, I actually think the Highlander Priest was a, a, a deck that was good for Hearthstone. And yes. uh, to, to be honest, like if it wasn't because the World Championship was in January, I think they would have nerfed this card right after the World Championship. So if it was in November, they would have nerfed this card. I think right after that that. So because it was in January, that's why we you know probably had it for as long as it did. But in terms of like like from the competitive standpoint this was the the deck that had a lot to do with all the amazing matches that we saw in in uh, the world championships you know it, it was never the mirror okay so the mirror is terrible the mirror is going to always be terrible in terms of you know some of the um you know just that the, has the, the a lot of skill involved yeah, if there, there does. people draw equally there does but in, in terms of a spectator right it, it just there's a lot missing from the standpoint of understanding what a lot of these players are doing when i'm watching it you know like you have to really really understand the game to even know the little nuances they're doing in the mirror so it just looks like oh whoever gets you know anduin first and, and Valen and and all the pieces they win so you know, so I mean, that's first off. So I, I actually don't mind how long it looks. I think it's it's time for it to change. You know, this is like a long enough. You know, so we should see a different thing. OTK though, like I have no problems with OTK when it requires you to draw a crap load of cards. Like Raz is different because you know you could actually win games like on turn eight. You know, like if you drew like right for whatever reason or turn nine, and, and that that's bad. When OTK is it can happen that early, that's a super bad thing. But, you know, when OTK happens after you, you draw an average, like, 25 cards, I'm okay with that. Oh, like, I, I hate that. Really? Like, I don't, <laughs> well, I don't think well, it's for that me, bad of a thing. Because for, for counterplay, right. well, so counterplay for me is, like, I see pros counterplay it all the time. You know what I mean? Like, it's just your average player doesn't know how to counterplay it. Like, that's what but, skill is, right? Like, skill some is... decks you can't counterplay. How do, you count, how do you counterplay quest mage, right? Yeah, you, yeah well, exactly. You, 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 you counterplay by just, like, mage. Yeah, you, yeah, you counterplay by just trying to you know, burst it down, like, as fast uh, as... Ah, yeah, but, but even yeah. that, a lot of the time, doesn't matter because it's based off their draw, not yours. Yeah. Uh, because they just oh, freeze. Yeah. If, if they draw Ice Block and freeze, which they will because they cycle, mm -hmm. their whole deck's about cycling, you just you just lose most of the time. Um, I actually... Uh, cards along the lines of uh, Unraveler, there was, a, I think, Matchamp a while ago was playing Rogue with two Unravelers, and that was yeah. sick. Like, I tried that list and I had a really good win rate because suddenly... Warlocks can't siphon soul on six. You know, like Twisted Nether doesn't <laughs> yeah, work. Yeah, uh, nice. You know, put mate, I had that insane sure. win rate against Mage because they can't do anything. I think more cards that let you, like, basically fuck around with your opponent uh, uh, are what's needed. I actually miss well, Lothar. 
Well, well it's like Dirty Rats, strong. right? Like Dirty Rats and Nomafratus and things like that. Well, I mean, my, people are playing those, right? Like, yeah, my, my worry with Dirty Rat is um, I think it's okay, but it's very, you know, like RNG issue, yeah. right? Like you just hope you hit it. Whereas whereas uh, Lotheb, you play it, your opponent's spells cost five more. That's a fact, right? If they have mm -hmm. spells in hand or not, that's the risk you're taking, but you use it to open a window. Um, yeah. Whereas I think there, are, there aren't enough cards that let you um, open a, a window of, of strategy for yourself. It's all about, well, I just hope he doesn't draw it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. You know, and that yeah. sucks. Like, you can't play the game. You're playing a single-player game at that point. I, I, I like the design of Lotte more than the Ner Neruba and Revola. Because it's just one turn. I, I agree. I agree. Because I was just using classes... Rabbler as a recent example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's classes that rely on spells, like Mage, for instance. Like, you can't just play a minion and then kill it. Mage has only spells. So, Lord Tab, you could save like a Frost Nova or something. Then you do an 8 mana Frost Nova. That's good for both players, anyways. And, and yeah, if I... you just. Yeah. I just really like one turn effects or, you know, X turn effects because there's the whole idea of you play Lothab and you know you've got a window of opportunity, but then your opponent probably knows you run Lothab. So they'll be, you know, ready for it or try and be ready for it and try and organize their strategy around that to sort of dodge that window and then get them back. So there was a lot of like fun play with that. Lothab might have been a bit too strong, but stuff like, you know, Anything like that is what the game needs because sitting and, and watching each other just draw cards and then whoever's <laughs> decks in the right order wins is, is just not a fun game, is it? You know, yeah. And that's not Hearthstone overall, but that's a few interactions of a few decks together in Hearthstone, right. which is what frustrates me the most. I don't like not playing the game when I'm playing the game. This is what I never understood. This is what I personally loved so much about classic Hearthstone, but I don't understand why we don't have it right now. They made like super powerful cards but they also had counter cards to it. For example, Ragnaros is, was like, I think the strongest legendary, almost one of the strongest or legendaries. Sylvanas, yeah, one of the other but you have a three mana BGH, so you have clearly an insane counterplay card to it. So I never had the feeling like, wow, I feel so bad about playing Ragnaros and then he just BGHs it. Because I think that was like the main reason why they nerfed it, because it feels bad to play your big minion and then it just gets countered. But that was so great. Like we had super strong weapons, but then we had Harrison Jones, um, we had like silence effect and all that stuff. I think this is what felt so great that you can have super powerful cards in the game, but you need to have the counter trade as well. So if that is the meta that well, come on, we have, we have a lose. bunch of cards that don't have counters. I mean, spiteful summoners, like there's no counter to spiteful summoner, you know, and that's yeah, like a six mana exactly. card, right? So and this is why it feels so bad to play the game. Uh, is BGH in, in a counter to spiteful summoner. I don't know. I've considered I mean, it a couple of times. It, to be it kills the like... big minion and it trades with the four four. Um, oh. Yeah, no, no. Honestly, the best counterplay is to play your own spiteful summoner and then hope to get more lucky. Yeah, hopefully you get the the, the tarantus, right? Yeah. <laughs> No, the, it, you're laughing, but I know, I, I'm I agreeing. I played, I played what, enough Spiteful Summoner priest. What and, frustrates and me is that to know, so, the, yeah. the variance in 10 drops hurts my soul from Spiteful Summoner. On one hand, you can get an Azoth or a Yogg. On the other hand, you get Tyrantus or Deathwing. And it's like... Yeah. But it's definitely, it's definitely skewed towards the Deathwing, though. I mean, you're going to get 10 10s and... I mean, there's only there's only the sick the basically the old gods that you can get screwed by. The other ones are all good. So yeah, the immune one is the worst one. That that the twelve twelve to immune. Tarantus. Yeah, Tarantus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I, I've gotten you know like Gasharaj so many times, and that's literally a game winner. I mean, on well, top I... of you getting in the big one, you get another like. Immune. But that's a six drop, by the way, if you think about it. That's a freaking six. Drop. I know it's a six I, draw. That's why I mean. I, I love it though when um I have a Deathwing, and because I'm running a spiteful deck, I'm probably playing a uh, Scalebane, so they kill the Deathwing somehow, and I'm like. Okay, kind of sucks, <laughs> but now I've got a 5-5 five five on the board for free. I'm like, sick. And so, passively, your Corridor Creeper yeah. gets reduced. If they can't yeah. stop the other <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, now ah, I just can't put the... I, I gotta put 2-5 five on the board five now. Yeah. Yeah, I put a 2-5 on the board now instead. Yeah. No, but... Yeah, so the power level... Yeah, so there's a lot of RNG, a lot of power level of the game has gone up since back in the day. I mean, back in the day, the big RNG complaints were Rag and Sylvanas. Like, there was no other RNG, and that was... Remember? That used to fill up Reddit, just those things. So nowadays, it's kind of laughable if you think you like think back in the old days. Um, okay, what so, me also what? is how people are looking forward to ro rotations. 
it reminds me of how they looked forward to guys dr boom will be gone soon like in one, two months or so so i'm really scared about the new cards they're gonna implement because now everyone is like no worries no worries all these cards are rotating out and it got worse last time they're like oh sure will be gone dr boom I, will be gone well i can tell you one thing is like i <laughs> i don't even try to like guess as to what blizzard's gonna do you know whenever they come out with the new sets because you know they've done some things that have been like remarkable in terms of changing power levels of a certain class and then they're they totally miss on a class that really needed something you know so they've they totally hit and missed so i have no idea what they're gonna do and, and I'll give you an example right like shaman shaman's been a complete miss for for two straight expansions now but warlock two expansions ago was not good and now look at warlock <laughs> It's like arguably the new, you know, overlords, which brings us to the point. Why didn't we see any nerfs to the, to the warlock cards? Because warlock is not going to even be affected by the reset. And we've got some of the most powerful. I mean, the key block, some people have even said is the most powerful that we've ever seen in Hearthstone. So, um, yeah. Doom talk to me about that. Do God Hall of Fame? You think so? Con, I, I tweeted oh, the other day. That would, that's, that's, that would that's, actually do a lot that's, if that, that's that was my the guess. Case. Oh my god! Pe that people are saying like, well, it doesn't matter. Control lock's better, right? Than cube, which is a, a fine response. But mm -hmm. control lock is is enough of a different deck that you could. That there are like ways to beat control lock. Yeah, there right? is ways to beat. Look, control. look at like um, because uh, one will have a new expansion, so no one can know. Like you just said, we don't know what the game's going to look like, but. And um, if there's any sort of spell style deck, you just you just kill the control lock a lot of the time, right? You know, like there, there are there are ways to go aggressive versus of it that don't um, rely on the void lords. Although I do think void lord could have had a nerf, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think like uh, I think we're gonna see some warlock cards go into. Uh, uh, that Hall would of fix fame. a lot. The Hall of Fame Doom Guard would fix a lot, to be honest. What do you think, Gar? Like in terms of warlock, and should they have nerfed on a cube, or I don't know what what it is, but do you think they should nerf something? For me, it's like com completely um, obvious that you have to. Uh, it's like a no-brainer, a complete no-brainer that you, that you have to nerf warlock. But what I'm immediately thinking is, how can they not see it? So then I'm thinking, how many times was warlock banned during worlds? Like, did the, the deck even see any play? I because think two, right two, now, two people let it through. Yeah, I mean, I think two people. Okay, orange let this it through really, and frozen let it through. I think once. This is really in line with the HCT Pro Tour qualifier. I played all of them, and I got to play Warlock like two times as well, or three times, because it's the main ban strategy. So they don't see it being played, because it's that strong. Like they're like, oh yeah. It's, we don't see it being oppressive, you know. <laughs> Nobody plays it. It's because it's banned all the time. <laughs> Every, like, yeah, and that's like crazy. this is how I explain it. They just don't see the deck being played, you know. It's not that oppressive. Look, Rasikus Priest, how broken it is. Uh, it's you can't build a tournament strategy to t ban Warlock because you can't beat it. Like no class beats it. You have to play like a quest rogue or a freaking okay. quest mage. Those are like the only decks that really target it. It's crazy. Like Priest, because Priest can get banned and Priest can beat it, but it's always like a 50-50 against cube block. So it's already that strong. And right, the, the, the other decks are getting nerfed. I, I think Quest Stroke is unplayable with the Patches nerf. You need the charge from Patches. Like a lot of people are saying, yeah, you will just play Quest Stroke, but you can't play it, I think, with Patches nerf. Really? So, okay. and Razakus Priest is like the number one counter and that is unplayable after the changes. So, and... The worst part is the rotation is happening, right? And the cube lock slash demon control lock is lo losing only minst mixture. Um, mixture of mixtures. Mi mixture. I think that's and it. It's like common, right? It was ready. It's uploaded like 5,000 upwards. Yeah, yeah. It didn't lose anything. So the counters are getting already nerfed and the rotation is happening. The deck is getting even stronger. It's like... Well, you, can, you can't say that though, right? Because one, like mistress is, is very important in Warlock. Uh, and and two, the an expansion's going to be out. Like, Warlock, like uh, the current version of Warlock could just get creamed by something from the expansion. Like, dude, if the, if there's no something idea. like that powerful, oh my god, well that's going to be crazy. It's going to be right? insane to be more powerful. Than it Kira. has to be so crazy powerful. <laughs> no. like, if you play a demon, I win the game. <laughs> <laughs> something like that i mean right now the thing with q block is that 
there I, I think some of the things to consider in terms of, of what to have nerfed or whatever um you know i, I think your doom guard suggestion is a pretty good one i think the other one too is just it's just the mana cheat you know i think one of the mana cheat things whether it was lackey or it was the weapon needed to be removed because right now like you, you can't go wrong like whether you draw stuff or you don't draw stuff as long as you have like one or the other you're mana cheating like 50 percent of the time and right. i mean i think it's the biggest culprit of that you know outside of spiteful summoner you know like that being a, a common card um, i also think it, void lord could have been a battle cry for the void walkers that, and not a death uh, rattle okay so you can't Nazot. i mean the zot's gonna be gone soon well, it's not even that. It's, it's if it comes out of weapon, it's just a three nine taunt, no death rattle, so you don't get that second layer of taunts to go through. Yeah, it's a, that's a that's a minor thing in, in my opinion, but yeah. I don't know. That's a lot a of taunts to hit through as an aggro deck. <laughs> like if you play an aggro deck and then yeah. Void Lord comes out, that's that's a lot of damage to go through nine nine health and then three separate instances of three health. Yeah, like, but that's I, scary. I, I like the whole ability to. You know, just lessen the the value. You know, when void lords don't have room on the board, and, and and not even triggering a void lord sometimes, right? Like if you if you want to just like prep your board or something like that. Like I I would miss that in, in silence too. Silence having a, a very, you know, like a very clear um, value in terms of that too. Um, it, you know, I think Nazoth disappearing actually is a hit to to that type of control build. Uh, so that'll be good. I mean, mm -hmm. that's another card that we, we didn't really talk about. You know, that going away. But um, they still have Goldan. Goldan's still going to generate all those those yeah. demons. So um... I always want to like bring up the example of counterplay. The deck is so opp oppressive because the counterplay to it is so bad. For example, if you look at the matchup, Control Mage versus uh, Cube Lock, you need four Polymorphs right now to even have like a small <laughs> chance. Because like if you double Polymorph the Void Lords, he's just going to resummon a board of seven Doom Guards and kill you with that. No, that's like the reason why you can't play like Control Paladin, whatever. I mean, weapon destruction is a counterplay to, to it. Kind yeah. of. Weapon the, destruction the... is, is such a whiff on so many other classes right now, though. It's like not popular at all, right? So. Right, but for example, Priest has started playing it a little bit. And also, if if Warlock's the, the Overlord and, and the ultimate deck, then everyone plays weapon because that's how you should face on ladder. And if you stop them getting a Doom Guard out for free, and yeah. like them having to play a Doom Guard, well, one, they can't do guard cube and uh, uh, dart pact on the same turn, even on turn ten. So that reduces it down quite a lot. So uh, weapon destruction is is something that you can do to gain uh, some kind of advantage or more of an advantage, should I say? But then but, um, it's again draw RNG, right? Does oh no, I'm I'm not RNG? saying it's it's a great answer. It's just yeah. th there are things that you can do. I, it's not great, but. So I'm showing I'm showing HS replay right now, um, and if you look at like the matchups page, and this is for all of Legend, you know we can we can obviously it changes some of these changes and the weights changes depending on so, but the, the biggest thing about the Q block for me, as you can see here, is that there just really isn't terrible matchups. Like even the the yep. the you know unfavored matchups are only like forty two percent. All I'll say is though, yeah. imagine those matchups without mistress and mixtures. Yeah, no, but you can just play the. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Argue, you can't really instead. discuss that because then all the other classes lose so much more than they do. Yeah. So sure. like a relative loss. I mean, the key blocks way ahead because of relative loss in terms of reset. Um, but just you know that that's what makes key blocks so good. It's just it's ver it's so versatile that you know like, like Gar was saying, there's just no counterplay to it. Like you literally have to, you know, like, have some very specific it. type of deck that sucks against everything else. Like yeah. So it's um, that's why it makes it so powerful. I mean, I I I wish I would have seen what the stats looked like for the shaman back in the day, you know, like a year ago or a year and a half ago. But I think it was similar too. That's why shaman was so impressive too. It just never it didn't have a bad super bad matchup, and I think mm -hmm. Q block has that variation. Q block's better in my opinion, just because it, you know, it, it definitely has like these kind of cool plays that you can make and synergies and combos. It has like fifty yeah. different. Win yeah, conditions. I mean it's it's <laughs> I mean it's beautiful in that way too. You know, like at the same time, like really, I I love the way the deck's built too. It's just relative power level is insane. <laughs> so that's the only knock against it. I think um, it's just one of those things of just the way the game is at the moment. Is that like Q Block's my favorite deck at the moment? Yeah. I played it the most by far. And you, there were so many games I've won in very weird ways, right? I've, like, cubed a, a Mistress of Mixtures, for example, to win games. You know, like, really weird things. But the problem is, there are still a lot of games where I play the weapon on five, drop a Doom Guard, cube, dark pack, lol, 
and you know and just win you know yeah. like and, and that's what feels bad right the times when the combo is just laid out for you and your opponent has no way to deal with it like that that's the the bad part which is similar to what Gara was saying about uh, lack of counterplay because sometimes you just draw pretty well and then you mess them up but yeah. because you have to go over like a thousand games or so you, you, you pointed out a very good card i think if you would not have the skull of manari it would be very different right yeah. oh yeah 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 100 yeah. sure. that's that's what i hate sure. so much about house right now is this i draw this card i win the game alonef for example for secret mage is the same Oh, yep. I draw this card. I guess I win the game. And we have like a lot yeah. of these cards. Oh, the one that right summons all. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, Alanetha. No, the legendary weapon. Alanetha is a weapon, right? Yeah. 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 yeah it, it's there's that. Like I said, there's, there's tons of value in the cards right now. So, um, you know, I I think the to be honest, I think the biggest um, opponent to the Q block is the Zoo Lock. <laughs> you know, like uh, just the fact in, in events, maybe somebody, some folks will or, or the Demon Lock. Maybe folks are going to want to play the demon lock over the cube lock, and then there's you know maybe a little bit of that kind of dynamic in terms of you know trying to guess what he has or you don't actually have to guess you you all know each other's deck list. Yeah, but in tournament yeah. everyone wants warlock right now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the spiteful yeah. lists are pretty good versus cube block, right? If I remember my numbers, because they play minions that are too big to clear. I've always done and, well, and but I, I think the, I think the stats show that it's not though. Like I, I've always done really? well with, with spiteful. That's about 50%. Let's... It's close to 50. Yeah, 50? But, but okay. it's like we're only looking at Priest and Warlock. Like those two classes have a lot of good decks. Actually, you have also Inner Fire Priest, you have like Razakus Priest, you have Spiteful Priest. Even Big Priest is actually a hard counter to it because you play Psychic Scream twice. God, I lose all the time to that deck. But these two decks, <laughs> or these two classes are so much better than all the other classes. This is the yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, but we're it was one of the big we're, stories we're, of worlds. Yeah, we're, was, but we're going to see was, priest like yeah. like reset a, a bit. I mean, priest has so many good decks right now that they'll be fine. Like after a reset, there's gonna, at least going to be one or or maybe even two good decks still. But that's because Operative they have like four going, or five. Right? They have like great decks right now. So, where uh, were you going to say, Raven? Uh, uh, operative uh, leaves, right? Yeah, oper oh, that's true. Operative leaves. So yeah, that's a off. biggie. The dragons get hit for sure. Yeah, but you know, you still have you know, you know we we haven't even talked about combo like combo priests was always still decent. Like, not the dragon combo priest that we saw, like, since the low run, right? But, you know, just the old school one with the razor leaf one, you know, like... Silence the, priest. The, yeah. the silence priest, yeah. That was still on the verge of being good, too. Like, back, you know, like, six months ago. So we haven't even talked about that deck at all give, uh, since, uh, you know, all this crazy stuff has come out in terms of tempo and, and Raza, Raza priest. So my, I think priest will be okay. My question is, I, I after think... the nerfs, our Warlock's going to play... Um... Dark Pact, not Dark Pact, uh, Sacrificial Pact to beat other Warlocks. Zero mana, kill a Doom God heal, go. <laughs> you will. So, something well, to think about. <laughs> I, I've considered it, I'm not gonna lie, but I've also considered most cards in most decks, so maybe that's not too big of a deal. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely gonna get great value, right? Of course, but, um, I don't know, that's a, that's a pretty big card to tuck in there. I mean, you I think if people saw it too, they would just ban it anyways, right? <laughs> so, that's true. Um, okay, well, anyways, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. It's going to be exciting, you know, next two months. And um, uh, I forget the timing of when the reset is. The reset's usually end of March, right? And the new expansions. Yeah, end April. of March, April. Yeah, yeah, around yeah somewhere in there. So uh, this this patch or, or this uh, update will be coming out in the next week or two or maybe three weeks. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of see. I can't wait to really review with a change in the meta because... Uh, uh, you know, we'll definitely be hopping on that on this show. Just immediately, let's just see what happens. Looks like what the meta looks like on HS replay and and things like that. It's going to be exciting to see. Um, all right. Well, uh, right now, why don't we uh, spend a little bit of time and take a give a shout out to just the folks that support this show, and that of course is the patrons. You guys are the ones that you know are 100 percent supporting the show at this point. If you are interested in doing so or becoming a patron, go to Patreon.com/ValueTown and uh, make a pledge today you know anything will anything will uh, will help the show you know in terms of of um how much you want to pledge so if you got a few you know like a quarter 50 cents dollar two dollars whatever all that stuff's going to definitely help us continue doing this want to give a big shout out to some of our, our um, you know awesome supporters of course our legendary producers mike t and a new one go tricks too um, and then some others, Gary D, Bryce L, Dave C, Devin Y, Eric L, Jackpot777, Jason B, Xiong C, Mike T, Richard M, and Jacob P. Thanks so much, guys. You guys are awesome. And um, I know a lot of you guys like might have not seen that video that I had, but um, you know, if you, if you didn't get a chance to watch that, 
Um, I'm going to be joining HS Replay soon, and Value Town is going to be kind of joining, um, kind of with me too. So that's kind of why you see the the logo up there. And really excited to get a chance to do that. And that's why you're going to be seeing a lot more stats and and things like that on this show. It's going to be exciting, and I can't wait to do that. But speaking of which, let's talk about Meta a little bit. And actually, this Meta is not even right. <laughs> uh, talk about the Meta in the last few days. And Ingar, I know you know you, you were talking about playing on ladder, but you never really talked about like what everybody's playing. So um, what have you experienced uh, in terms of what everybody's playing right now? Maybe the for me personally, it feels like everyone is playing the same decks, but in reality, it's like a little bit more. Maybe I'm like a little bit too biased. It's like so much Rasekus Priest. And it's, it's such a weird, it, it really feels like Rock, Paper, Scissors more than ever before. Mm -hmm. Because you have like, you can play a Demon Lock that just, is super favorite versus aggressive decks, and it kind of auto loses to Rasakus Priest or Quest Rogue if you queue into that. And then you can play Rasakus Priest and just you know get a free win against Demon Lock, but then you kind of <laughs> Quest Mage, but you're like way worse against aggressive decks. And and oh, yeah, you auto lose to Jade Druids. And the worst triangle is definitely Demon Lock, Jade Druid, and Rasakus Priest because they absolutely hard counter each other. and Right now, so many people are just trying to counter queue. So you always have to wait. Like if you really don't want to de decrease your win rate, you have to wait after every single game because every opponent could be switching his deck. And you can't even re queue into a good matchup because there's like two archetypes. Wait? How long do you normally have to wait? I, I wait 69 seconds because I made that with my Twitch chat. 69 seconds, okay. I, I, you're, and you're then 420 for the long seconds. ones too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. 69 seconds should be good enough and then good to go. Um, yeah, people do tricky stuff, right? People go switch from Agro Druid to Jade Druid and from Zoo to Demon Lock and from Quest Rock to Temple Rock. Those are like the most we common switch ones. switch card back sometimes as well. Yeah. And it, it's, it, it, I hate that it is like that, right? The, 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 the matchups are so polarized. This is what is so frustrating. The gaming experience is very frustrating. Super polarized matchups. Yeah, now you're tr seeing way more inner fire priest just to counter Razakus priest, and yeah, super polarized matchups. And but I mean, we've seen all these decks before. Like you see a lot of Murloc Paladin, um, Cube Lock, Razakus priest, inner fire priest, and then spiteful Jade Druid. I don't even know how to call it. Curved Temple Druid. Spiteful, it's just spiteful Druid. druid. You yeah, kind of call player. every deck, this is what you were like uh, criticizing last week, that we basically call the deck after one card of the deck yep. most of the time. Exactly. We call Spiteful Druid just, yeah, Spiteful Druid. Because <laughs> there are two yeah. lists of Spiteful Cthulhu and Spiteful non cthulhu Exactly. Yeah. Which, which, you know, <laughs> That's like, how we call the deck. <laughs> That's true. I mean, it, it's tough sometimes. Man. You have to figure out which Prince one's decks. actually more unique, right? Prince decks. Yeah, Kalisad decks. Prince it's not a very a unique way decks. to name them, okay? But, you know, I, I think it so far it's gotten gotten the point across. I just wish it was better. You know, so like I'm showing right now the um, the most current kind of trend that we're seeing on, on Legend Ladder right now. And like you said, it's pretty much Highlander Priest 57% <laughs> across the board, which is pretty crazy. That's really good. 57%. Yeah. On High yeah. Look at that. It looks like it's it's basically Temple uh, Highlander Priest, Temple Rogue, and Zoo. That seems to be pretty much everything. That's yeah, really those, right. this is the tr triangle usually. Mm -hmm. It's usually around 35% Priest, I would say around 25% Warlock, and then around 22% Rogue, and then Druid is the fourth with like 12%, mm -hmm. and then we have the rest. What's really funny <laughs> is the Q block isn't there. Yeah, and, and like you know, what I mean, like it, because it's the difference between a deck being good against a, a few things versus a, a deck being overall just good and has a good chance against anything, which yeah. is Highlander Priest. Um, because it's very interesting. Oh, you know, Warlock was banned out in in Worlds. Warlock's amazing. Blah blah blah. Well, you know, one that's Zoo that we saw there, like not even <laughs> right. any form of control or Demon Lock. Um, there's been a just random. Slight change of subject, if that's okay, Chen Man. Yeah, go for it. Um, Blizzard have just posted. Can I? Where, where's the best way to send me uh, send you a link? Post. Uh, send me a direct um, message in Discord. In Discord, okay. Yeah. So Blizzard, there's been, uh, and you'll be very interested in this, I guess, Gara. There's been a lot of um, 
uh, issues about the online qualifiers for tournaments uh, for HTT stuff. Oh my god, why is this so hard to find you? And uh, there you are. And Blizzard have posted a response uh, about some stuff about the reported harassment of certain players, about the player in the Sydney qualifier with the deck list that was wrong. And also about the uh, the number of players and the time it takes to run the tournaments. They're discussing putting the one to 1,024 players into separate like flights. So separate mini tournaments that are randomly seeded. So still the same amount of qualifiers, but your, you as a player in that tournament will not be waiting 50 hours for your next game because there's just less players to wait for. If that makes sense, so yeah. it's it's a it's a post that's got you know it's all there, so you can uh, go through it if you want, Chairman. But okay. it's just um, a pretty interesting message on what how they dealt with the person putting the wrong deck list. Uh, he was penalized by the looks of things. What they think about the cups, they understand they've messed up, and uh, I think the the organization at the bottom is very important. Splitting from one one twenty four mans to to like I don't know one hundred twenty eight. Like 10, 128 oh, mans, for example. God, no, like, it's, it must just be man. so much of a better experience for players because the biggest thing we talked about, especially at Worlds, was what? how are you supposed to wait seven hours for your next match? Because yeah, some of the players it's... at Worlds were doing that. Orange was doing that. It's and crazy. it's like, how is that reasonable in any way? And it's just not. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I criticize a lot of these things like over the past years, uh, and I get like a lot of negative feedback even though i'm right even though people agree people just like to point out that i like complaining all the time but i i think i had like a big impact on a lot of the changes even for balance changes just because i was very outspoken i think uh just from a on a human basic human level you can't expect from anyone to play 17 hours on one day exactly. in a row yeah. anything like even if you're a professional like that's just not healthy, right? Yeah. Can't expect that from anyone. What's worse is um, there were some players who had like a six, five hours, five, six, seven hour wait for the next match to catch up. And then they were 10 minutes late for when that match decided to randomly start when the previous play was ready and got DQ'd because they were Yeah, that happened to me as well. Like, oh, did that happen to you as well? <laughs> yeah, you, you have it's, to. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's just think about yeah. it. Yeah. Because you only have 10, you get one little like pop up, like you have to check in now. So like beep. But you, you have to wait seven hours. You basically have to sit and look at it, the screen all the time for seven hours in theory. <laughs> to not miss it ridiculous. because it can happen at, at any point. Like it's, it's really like that. It's ridiculous. And, and it's also just not like a good mindset to be in as a player, right? To sit down and say, this might take me 24 hours to play in this tournament that you've got to be switched on for all the time is, is just, it's just not good enough. But it looks like they're changing it. And I know at Worlds, uh, us as, as casters and, and some of the Blizzard staff were start talking about it, thinking of ways that it could be fixed. And one of the uh, one of the discussions, obviously, was why don't you just run 10 mini tournaments and have top two go through? Or, you know, whatever that number is, it doesn't matter. But say the 16 players run 16 mini tournaments and have the winner of each one qualify. Because although that may feel worse in one aspect... It's effectively the same thing, except the players don't have to play for 100 hours <laughs> to, to work out who the hell qualifies <laughs> Jeez, for a that, tournament. That would be like, nice, wouldn't it, <laughs> if you didn't have to play well, that? it's just like Gara said, it's a base, like, human improvement, right? Like, it's unacceptable that it was like, going on for that long. Like, in real sports, you imagine that. Like, you have to freaking, I don't know... <laughs> participate in like a soccer match for 17 hours or something That's yeah, like, yeah, just, like, yeah that'd be just totally crazy so yeah hopefully they'll improve this and you know keep iterating through it I, I still think it's a little crazy even even with 10 you know just even reducing it by three three or four rounds but um you know i i i think it, it's hard you know when when you have this type of structure that really lets anybody play in it you know it's going to be tough you know mm. and and it's something that I think that you know they should continue to evaluate whether it's the right decision, you know, just to keep this type of um, narrative, this this central structure as to you know having this every every man can get into the main you know uh, storyline of of HTT, and because that that's what causes these issues. Like no, so we talk about pro sports. None of the pro sports have this issue because they have qualifiers and they have like you know golf has has qualifying school that you have to go through and you know like they're not in the same boat sorry guys it's a little choppy i'm not like like my computer's like kind of 
chugging for some reason. Um, but, uh, you know, like the the golf, golf and tennis, like in their qualifiers, they don't put the pro players with all these other like guys that are trying to qualify just for the pro tour and stuff like that. They have a pro tour that's that's dedicated just for the pros, you know, and they have, you know, probably somewhere 200, 300 players in that and that's it. You know, and so the tournaments are 256 at, at, at the largest, I think. Um, uh, so in traditional sports, we don't even see this kind of issue because there is a delineation. And even Magic, right? Magic probably doesn't even have this kind of thing. It's just a horrible organization if you look, um, if you go to the bottom of it. For example, they actually have a very good system for the Challenger Cups. I think people don't even talk about this. Challenger Cups is way more players than for one of these Pro Tours because yeah. it's for, it, everyone is eligible that didn't go to preliminaries, which is yeah. pretty much 99% of the player base. And yeah. they're all Swiss and they all last around five hours from start to finish. You have Swiss, you have double elimination, and it's like Raven said, top two qualify to like to the next stage. So basically you can play this every single day. There's like 250 people or so what, what can enter. It's just you need to do more qualifiers, obviously. Why do they only have four qualifiers for Pro Tour and everyone wants to go to that Pro Tour and there's one global qualifier. So they do like 2,000, yeah. 3,000 players for one and then they don't even do it Swiss and they do it double elimination even well, though they know Swiss is better. Like they have 70% of the tournaments of Swiss now, but 30%... Yeah, there, there, there's no re I don't understand. No it. consistency. I don't understand why they're not doing Swiss. Swiss is definitely a better. What's route. really funny about yeah. that as well is is that um you know you're saying why aren't there more qualifiers? I've actually seen a lot of pro players say they wish there were less, because they they're like if there's five qualifiers you can play in all five. You don't make day one, then you have to play in day two, then you have to play in day three, then you have to play in day four. Mm -hmm. And I've seen pro players complain about that aspect. They don't want to do the play every day to grind it out because it feels like more of just a open cup grind in terms of qualifying for the tournament so it's, it's interesting to hear uh very different opinions on that because they, they compared it to the open cup grind well i mean you it could waste be. days right like you, you could play the first two or three days and you end up getting nothing right i, I think that's maybe where yeah that's what they mean like if, yeah, if there's five the if there's like 10 from. qualifiers mm -hmm. you have to play in them until you qualify right or until yeah. they run out mm -hmm. so I think making them into flights would would increase the the experience dramatically because you literally chop the time it takes to run it in yeah. half at least, like at least. Well, there, there's you know, a certain so... point. There's a certain point where you should absolutely do Swiss over double limb. Like I, you know, I, I've been running you know, tournaments even just at my firesides, and you know, we're actually doing a. Uh, um, a, a tavern hero soon to next month if you guys are in the florida area um oh yeah and, and, i'll be i'll be <laughs> i know you're not gonna be there but I, I forget what the number is i think it's like once you reach uh i forget it's a number of rounds like it, once you reach a certain number of rounds in double elimination then it starts becoming way worse to, to do double elimination versus swiss i think i think only for a player base like seed story double elim is good and there's like 32 i think yeah. past yeah, 32 it's, it's in that range 32 64 around that range i think yeah i think one one thing to note as well is the logistical issues of managing swiss online it it's a potential nightmare because that no one else can play until one two until the last two have finished right what if one guy has gone afk for 10 minutes 20 minutes or you know one match is taking forever so an admin has to try and contact those players who are playing work out what's going on, no one else can play. And I'm not saying double limb's better, but at least in double limb, all the other matches can play up until a point. Whereas in Swiss, round two cannot happen until all that 1,000 or, you know, X players have actually finished and reported their finish and got no arguments about the finish. Yeah, Because if you can uh, test sure, the match... But, but there, I, I really not, want to say something to that. It's not about that. It's, wait, well, real quick. It's not about that so much, right? Like, sure, that's more inefficient, but the total number of rounds will be less. You know what I mean? Like that that's where the big gain is from playing Swiss. Is that you won't have as many rounds as a double limb. Like double limb, there's But what if the rounds where... are four times as long? That's the problem, right? I mean, you you have to measure that, but I still think Swiss in the end is much more efficient. But Gar, are you gonna say something? Yeah, yeah, no, Raven has an excellent point because I experienced it. I played two Challenger Cups, right? I, I won the the second one. And that is there was actually also one of the main complaints why Swiss not and I think the admins solved it great. It's like from Eska, 
the guys from Eska, mm -hmm. and they have like a global chat, right? Everyone enters that chat in the lobby and they always update it like every five minutes, how many matches are left. So you always have like an estimate on when you, when the next That's round cool. is going to start. They're like mm -hmm. three matches remaining, two matches remaining, one match remaining. Then, you know, okay, in about yeah. like 10 minutes, we will, we will play. And still, but what you said, it's crazy it's how toxic happens. the people were. Like people were insulting the admins like all the time. Oh my God, when is the next round about to start? Swiss sucks. I, I was shocked to see that. I was like, uh, well, you mean e either side, like people are just impatient. It doesn't matter what you do, like double limb or Swiss, you're going to have people complaining about not being able to play immediately when they're ready to play. So, you know, like, that's just the life of an admin. It sucks. I mean, even though it was like, it was like such a good solution for it. It, <laughs> it is a great solution. Nice that is cool. That is really like, cool. So toxic. They're like, oh, are you female admin and, and stuff oh, like my that? God. What? Yeah, really. Oh, like man. super. Like, that's the most terrible. And it was so sick. Fun. Okay. That, that's, sick. that's another level. So, if, yeah. if in, in, uh, if they ran Swiss, they added a rule, right? If you start your match, oh, there's a start time, right? Like match is start, game started now, round started now, whatever, whatever that is matter. If you are still playing at the like end of uh, end of two <laughs> hours, then you you both just get knocked out of the tournament. God, yeah. that would be so funny. That'd be like some speed hearthstone going on there. It would well, keep it. I mean, it would keep it on time. <laughs> I mean, I, actually, I don't think that's a bad idea. I, no, I, I mean, no, I, I think that's actually a good in two idea. Hours. No, I mean, putting a time limit is a very common thing and everything because there is logistical aspects to, to all of this. It shouldn't be just, oh, you can take... This ain't, this ain't chess, man, Like where you can just literally take days to make one move. You know, like, Well, at least chess has a, a clock. Yeah, well, well. Na you know, now, but I mean, back in the day, right, in the oh, championships, sure, sure, sure. I mean, literally, it would take like a day to make like a few moves. So, I mean, th this is supposed to have a timer, like like golf too, right? Golf, they'll call time on you, and then you'll have to you have like two or three minutes to like make a make a swing. So also um, to make it also to make it best of three yeah. in qualifiers, if it's not like a super important qualifier, it really cuts the time by so much. Like yeah. if you make conquest three decks, um, best of three. It's also way more accessible for people because they need less decks. It doesn't maybe sound like a big deal, but right now in the current state of Hearthstone, it's a huge deal because, as I pointed out earlier, Priest and Warlock are so much better than the other classes. And having the extra two classes is like so difficult. And just having to bring three decks, is just, it's really great. It, it was really like one of the greatest experiences I ever had in playing qualifiers, now these Challenger Cups. Okay. Well, so this um, is great. Yeah, yeah, we just, I mean, there's, there's always going to be a challenge and even, you know, with putting a time, some people will abuse it and just be assholes and, you know, like literally just rope in just because they know they're going to lose. And they want you to lose too, like going by going over time or something stupid like that. There are a lot um, of problems. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there, there's always going to be issues. There's players, I, I mean, you just hope that they, you know, kind of like more of an honor system would just be, you know, like a good participant, you know? <laughs> But well, it's, it's a challenge and, and it's something that they have to work through. So hopefully they can figure out what that medium ground is. That's going to be, you know, the less of uh, evils there. Uh, but OK, well, we're kind of running over. Why don't we just get to the Q&A portion here? Uh, we've got a question from our man, uh, you know, Ahmed, as usual. And uh, he throws out a question. What feature would you like added to HS Replay and become a separate tool? Ahmed, I, I didn't even like ask for this question. So like, you know. <laughs> Good question, Ahmed. I would love to have <laughs> access to top players' data and see how it differs from the rest. Question from Chenman so, V123. Yeah, right. Oh, man. Yeah, so. yeah. Good. yeah. Good. nice try, Chenman. We know that's you. Yeah, <laughs> Ahmed is actually me every single week now. That's, that's, uh, yeah. But anyways, like, yeah, what, what kind of tools would you like to see on the site, Gara? Or even Raven, too, right? Um, he's a caster. Yeah. I kind of, like... Told you already. <laughs> you told like, me privately, yeah. Yeah, I already told you. He wants to know publicly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like um, good changes would be definitely like more region-based stuff because sometimes when there's like a deck that has like high legend, high win rate, it's usually like on like a specific server. And like if you're climbing on Asia, you really would like to know specifically for Asia what, what are the best decks yeah. there to climb. Mm -hmm. It would really help out a lot. And yeah, stuff like that, and for like tournament um, stat stats on the side that you that would be insane as well. Like what are people like? 
also for qualifiers, not just big tournaments, but are people playing qualifiers, whether it's like most band decks there and stuff mm -hmm. like that, the high spin rates there. Okay, I was gonna cool. say, from, from, from my knowledge at least, for anyone who watched the World Championships, uh, HS Replay actually designed a separate tool for yeah. casters to use, mm -hmm. uh, which was very, very helpful. And it was funny. I, I remember, was it, it might have been Anne. We were meant, I was mentioning it, or we were talking. It's like, wait, so you don't, you don't use Dead Tracker before? We were like, nope, Dead Tracker's all up here. For, for for casters like, <laughs> I was like oh i didn't realize i was like thanks you know like, that's, a, that's a compliment i'll take it but yeah the, the tool they made us was amazing and they added tons of cool stuff um in, in terms of just it's, it's stuff that's in deck tracker but for both players basically but what i what i kind of would like from the website is um almost a uh a, a sort of not not a meta report because the the website does a very good job of telling you that, but some kind of front end uh, w where it's a bit more uh, user friendly, maybe because I think simpler, people might get just something yeah, very just, simpler, or just or just like almost a step by step of like simple version or pleb mode mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, what class do you like, rogue? Oh, yeah. what decks do you know? Like just even a, yeah. a walkthrough of how to get the get to this data and what it means. Um, but also, I do think the whole uh, you can link it now to Twitch. So when you're streaming one of the decks, it knows. And then on the website, you can view a deck and it tells you if someone's live streaming it. Like, that is sick. Anything that helps, like, create the full circle of, like, deck to player to ladder to background to player, you know, like that sort of circle just to, one, promote players who use the tool, which is only a good thing, promote the tool itself. Uh, but, yeah, for me, I just maybe just... Um, a simpler user front end would, would be really good because I, I used to be a data analyst as well so i don't care like i'll sit and read spreadsheets and data all day mm -hmm. but for i think a lot of people don't understand the data um and also i don't even know if this would be possible but one thing that's hard to explain is the, the played win rate of a card because like Leroy played win rate is very high because you use Leroy to oh, kill your only opponent. Only in one yeah, situation. Right, yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, but people might think, oh my god, like Leroy is amazing and yeah, it's a good card. But it's the same as Gul'dan has extremely high played win rate. Yeah, no shit, basically. But maybe even oh, like... Antonidas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Antonidas is ridiculous. But like maybe like played win rate that isn't the lethal turn. If, yeah. You know, like so something like that yeah. to filter out some of the the other stuff well the whole point of played win rate is really to to know whether just to play it in the deck or not so i mean i think the ones that are totally skewed that are you know like antonite's 100 or whatever yeah, yeah. is uh i mean it's good to have it there it's just i think you need to realize what the range is for you know what you should be playing right and, yeah and, and i and i think out. yeah i think mm -hmm. if again it's i guess it's more of a, a newbie thing because i understand of course but it's just like people might think the wrong things about the quality of cards yeah, uh, but what surprised me was like Prince Taldoran was extremely high in Q block. I think it was my third third highest played win rate on 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 my games. Uh, that was a uh, not weapon or Gul'dan. I yeah. was like, damn, Prince Taldoran's sick. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that was interesting to me, and and especially yeah. for me to talk about whilst casting, it's important to know these things. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, okay. mainly for the more the, the more noob users, I think there could be some more stuff fleshed out. Yeah, d definitely, those things will will I. Can't say 100% anything, it. but it's going to be, you know, hopefully in the pipeline, you know, at least things along the sort, along those lines. And, you know, you'd, you'd almost guess that Raven was a freaking Asian replay and playing the, the way you were talking about all the features. Dude, I, I, was gonna, I love Daya. No, it's, I love no, Daya. I was so be talking about. <laughs> the, I will say, though, this um, Primal, Primal, replays from top ladder players, that would be sick. Replay packs yeah. from people, like... That I, I used to watch all the replay packs mm -hmm. from StarCraft tournaments back when I played. Yeah. And like that was sick. Yeah, but replay like, packs would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Gara replay yeah. pack and it would help promote the player again, but also people could understand yeah. plays if they're not streaming. Stuff like that would be sick. Actually. And people, yeah, people so are, aren't don't under have never even been there. Go to hsreplay.net, check it out. It's yep. a site that will show you all the win percentages of all the different decks. What like what decks are doing the best right now in all the it's different really good. and stuff. <laughs> 
And um, like like Raven was saying, like there's actually a new feature right now that um, you know, that HS you know a, the the deck tracker and HS replay we actually have the Twitch extension to, that's available to all streamers. So if you go and download that, that'll automatically have you know your deck tracker deck you know just what you always use you know up on the screen. You don't actually have to add it to your your own broadcaster like like all of us normally have to do. And then on top of that, it does connect you. Um, people that use the site with your stream. So if you're using, say, like the Spiteful Summoner Priest, we have this little live now Twitch Twitch uh, icon that you can click on and it'll it'll show the list of streams playing that deck so you can actually see how possibly to play that deck. You know, maybe one of the popular streamers are playing it. So um, yeah, lots of cool stuff there and, you know, lots more to come. I promise <laughs> lots more to come soon. And uh, yeah, it, I'm glad that we're able to like kind of you know, provide an awesome tool, especially you guys too, Raven. Like, this is just the beginning with the broadcaster tool, I think. So Oh, it's um, insane. You know, it's, it's insane. Keep the feedback it, coming. It it yeah. makes us it makes us one sound smarter, which is always a bonus. <laughs> that, that's, I love people who make me sound smart. Um yeah. but also it, it creates like it removes such a load we had beforehand of like has he played this? Has he played that? How many cards does he have left? Like, what cards are left in the deck? You know, what are the percentages on this? Like, what mm -hmm. is Jade's at? You know, like, really dumb things that we should remember. But yeah. with all the mental juggling we do, we can forget quite easily. And all it does is make the, the, the cast and, and the, the, the viewers probably feel a bit worse for if we miss something. Whereas now, it's very difficult. If we miss stuff now, I'll only say for HCT, because other <laughs> tournaments don't have this yet. If we miss stuff for HCT that's really bad, definitely tweet us, even though you do anyway. <laughs> but we, we should we, we should be better is all i'll say now you guys did i mean you guys did a great job at HTT. so um uh, anything we can do to help improve that will definitely be uh something that we, we'd love to do but all right guys let's wrap up we've got well we're going in two hours today so um why don't we get into some shout outs raven it's always a blast having you on man never have a never have a bad episode with you on it so um <laughs> any, any shout outs you want to do uh, yeah just the just the usual um my my twitter is on the screen Oh, I'm going to guess here. Oh, it's the wrong yes, side. Yeah, definitely side. here. Uh, then whatever, that was bad. Uh, yeah, my Twitter's at Ravencast. Uh, I stream, and I'm linked to Deck Tracker, so you can find me everywhere, but it's um, RavenHS on Twitch. Uh, and I'll be casting some events very soon. I don't think I can announce what those events are, but I'll be doing them. Okay. So, All yeah, right. see you soon, guys. Yeah, <laughs> when, once the events pick up, it just never stops it's raven's, relentless raven's the, that's why i'm trying to get him on the show as much as possible during this like off season because he'll never be able to come on like during this season. i've already been like I've, I've been obviously you know i talk to organizers and stuff about yeah. going to events i'm already like i'm already having to say no to a couple because wow. i physically can't manage it you know already <laughs> right. the, january right. to like what april used to be the quiet time for hearthstone yeah and now there's there's already tons it's gonna be a mad year it's it's gonna be sweet it's gonna be awesome Gara, how about you, man? Shout um, out. Shout out to the viewers, uh, as always, and the people from my stream that are watching as well. And they can expect to see me more often. Today I couldn't stream because of my weird sleep schedule. And yeah, shout out to you and for having me on the show. And it's well, I mean, fun. you're joining the show now, so yes, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be awesome having you, you on. You are the show. Guy. You are the show. That's right. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're definitely happy, you know, having you, you join the show and it's going to be great getting, you know, just that your pro perspective, you know, that's kind of what we want to do, you know, with value time moving forward. So, um, it's going to be amazing. And for me, I just want to give a shout out to both of you guys for doing the show, everybody for watching. Of course, um, if you guys, uh, want to listen to us, like on the way to work, if you're working out or whatever, you can find us on iTunes as well as, uh, Google, uh, Google play store, you know, just with any of the Android, uh, podcasting apps as well as soundcloud.com slash champion V find the VODs on youtube.com slash champion V for now. I mean, eventually we'll have a, I think I just replay YouTube channel that we'll, we're going to start uh, moving some of the VODs over to, but for now you can find it there. Uh, and a uh, big shout out to hsreplay.net. Of course, just go there, sign up all that good stuff. And then, um, that's going to be it guys for value town this week. So for Raven, Gara and myself, champion V. We'll see you next week. Yeah, it's